Interested in Vibe Campus? Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vibe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vite Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vitemedia.com to find out how to join Vite Campus today. I can appreciate that. Let's get a mic check. Check one. All right, check one, two, check one, two, check. Hello, check one, two. Check one, two, check one, two, check one, two, check one, two. So, Mr. Clary is our, our uh, QA. That's right. All righty. All right. Here we go. So, had this conversation with uh, old timer um, in the, out in the foyer with Brent Bodie, who was the star running back on the first state championship team. And he was quite the speedster down the side. And I think that state championship game was uh, also in Waco, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. No, we didn't call the first one. No, we didn't. We, we called, called the second one. But it was in the same place. Do you remember against who? Here we go. Oh, was it against Stubb? Come on, it wasn't Stubb. You're close, though. Uh, Stump. Stump Godfrey, quarterback. Stump Godfrey. For Carthage? Nope. Um, huh. From Gilmer. Gilmer, you got it. And do you remember what happened on the very first play of the game? I think they ran it back for a touchdown. Who did? Uh, not Liberty Hill. Why? I don't remember. Ooh, you don't remember why? No. And not only do I remember why, but I remember that when the wind blew the ball off the tee for the second time, I said on air... You can go back and check the. You can go back and check. <laughs> I checked the tape. You can go back and check, check the, the tape. tape. I'm on tape, and I said <laughs> that is that is going to cause one of the weaknesses of that Liberty Hill team was that special teams. Oh, that's right. Unit, and I said that we can ill afford to have one less guy on that team because they could end up making a breaking a big one, and then. Sure enough, it blew up the second because time they went, they gotta, had a, had and he had a went holder. and had to go holder. And I said it, and right down the field they went. But that was it. After that, it was over. It was over. <laughs> After that, that was no, it. No, that's not true. No, it Stump. As soon as the... Stump, as soon as Stump hurt his thumb, we knew it was. We knew it was bad. Because old Stump busted his thumb. Huh. Stump Godfrey. Old stump. <laughs> uh, one of the best dick, dick, nicknames that we've ever had. Stump? Yes. That's a, a, excellent football name. That's an excellent football yes. name. Okay, uh, Mike one two. Mike good. I'm hoping the hum will kind of dissipate into the Can background. Can he hear the hum? He said it's a it's a 
Um, yeah, not good. It's that cord you put in for me. Coach, what's the matter with the scoreboard? It's fine. Zero to zero. Oh, it's, it says zero to nothing. Hang on. Can he hear the hum? It's slight. Did, if you turn... No, I, I checked it with Suna. I think it's the crowd mic or it's the uh, board itself. What if you unplug the crowd mic? Are you still going to get the hum? Just curious. I do. I do still hear it. Unplug mine. I did. And you still get a hum? Yep. I unplugged everything up here. Oh. Still hum. Oh, you still got a hum and you've unplugged every cord. Ow! I didn't mean to do that. You got it off? Yes. The hum went away there. I can still hear it slightly. Yeah, it's a good ball game when I do that to you. That's good luck for us. I hope so. I'm done with the mic check. That's <laughs> good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Co Coach, I got him again. Coach, I got him again. Oh, Bastrop doesn't have an O. Oh, yeah, Coach. Yeah, I got it. Okay, good. Um. All right, well, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. I think it's a board, Coach. I already took the picture and sent it to Suna. And uh, she had me adjust the main. This is my this is my battleship I'm going to war with. So, Yeah, yeah, that's what I like, Coach. Very low. Once we get the crowd, you're not even going to be able to hear it. Tim's going to be talking over it the whole time anyway. The crowd and the voice of the Panthers should... Square us away. We'll be announcing him in just a second here to give us one minute. A game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in Texas. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. So, how are the kids? Well, Emily made the honor roll. Oh, good for her. Yeah, we're really proud of her. Tyler, on the other hand, though, what's going on? He's been moody like lately, it. just feeling down and not like himself. Oh, we've been there. Nick was struggling last spring. He was so anxious and stressed. Really? What helped? Well, can he joined still, the soccer team, and, and ever oh, since, hey, he's been a lot happier. He has more energy, he's less stressed, and he's definitely in a better mood at home. It's made a huge difference. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm glad he's getting out of the house, he's getting some exercise, and he's off his phone for once. It's been good for his mental health. Sounds like it's been good for your mental health, too. Participating in Texas high school sports improves students' physical and mental health. Encourage your son or daughter to get involved. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School.
escorted by Francesca Torres and Juan Salian Taliano. And Trinity Whitson, escorted by Big Bad Christopher and Christy Whitson. and Greg M Miller. Sorry, Chloe Miller. Riley Renshaw, escorted by Elise and Shane Renshaw. And now for the band, ladies and gentlemen. Hunter. Bordenaro, escorted by Danielle and Frank Bordenaro. Joshua Castillo, escorted by Richard Castillo, Jeanette Rios, and Evan Castillo. Renee Cesar Rodriguez, escorted by Jeanette and Salvador Rodriguez. Mandy Confort Conforte, Escorted by Samuel and Devin and Carly Conforti. Luis Cruz Cifuentes, escorted by Maria Guadalupe Cruz and Dorado Cruz. Gentlemen, back to the band members. Landon Cunningham, escorted by Shane Wittenella, Kyle Cunningham, and Wesley Boyd. Jasmine Flores, escorted by, escorted by Kareem and Juan Flores. 
Sean Flores, escorted by Paula and Alex Flores, Raymond and Marshall Flores. Isaac Gallardo, escorted by Juana and Edgar Gallardo. Luke Gilson, escorted by Allison and JG Butler. Daniel Horridge, escorted by Brooks Horridge and Patricia Guzman. Kiara Johnson, escorted by Shaquille Walker and Ronald Johnson. Colton Knobloch, escorted by Crystal Knobloch, Ramona Hurd, Lena Ivy, and Robert Hurd. Haley Loudon, escorted by Tabitha and Brent Loudon. Kayla Martinez, escorted by Elias, Shannon, and Michaela Martinez. Anastasia Millsap, escorted by Jennifer Millsap and Brisa Cuevo. Brooke Napier, escorted by Brent and Melissa Napier. Alejandro Ramirez, escorted by Michael, Alice Ramirez, Francesca Ramirez Ford. Isaac Ruder, escorted by Kirby and, and a really crew of Ruder. Jessica Savage, escorted by Allison, Jeremy Savage, and Alonzo Vasquez. Cameron Southwell, escorted by Matthew and Lacey Southwell. Emma Weldon, escorted by Sean, Ashley, and Jack Weldon. Jared Wildebrand, escorted by Danny Wildebrand and Amber Wildebrand. Gregory Wilson, escorted by Miss Lee Wilson and grandmother Liam Wilson. Brooklyn Wright, escorted by Josh Wright. Mia Yancey, escorted by Garnett Gilbert, Elizabeth Bruchet, and Zaley Toiler. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for all these wonderful seniors. For senior night out here, last night at Memorial Stadium, put your hands together for them. It's a memorable time, it's a sad time, it's a happy time. Congratulations to all our seniors making it this far.
evening, fans, and welcome to Bastrop ISD Memorial Stadium for tonight's contest between the Liberty Hill Panthers and the Bastrop Bears. This game is being conducted according to the rules and regulations of the University Interscholastic League. Regardless of the outcome of tonight's game, all the players have proven their willingness to work and sacrifice in order to achieve athletic excellence. We ask that as a spectator, you consider the time and effort each of these teams, coaches, and athletes have put forth. Please cheer on and support these young athletes, but do not, through any of your actions, cause them to doubt the value of athletics. By your conduct, allow these young people to feel pride in their communities and school. While your sportsmanlike actions may play only a small part in the outcome of this game, they will play a greater role and continue to encourage competitive athletics. We also ask that you show your appreciation for the students who will be taking part indirectly in tonight's game. The cheerleaders, the bands, the pep squads, and the students who support their teams at home and away. These young people play an integral part in their team's success. And as always, please be courteous to opposing fans. Cheer for your team, but please show respect for fans of both teams as we wish for everyone to have a safe and fun-filled time at tonight's games. Now please draw your attention to the video board for a quick announcement from our athletes. Welcome to the Bastrop ISD Memorial Stadium. Your scholarship is one of the primary purposes of education athletics and a pillar of the university and the scholastic league and all member schools. Our student athletes recognize that judgment calls made by officials, coaches, and themselves are made in good faith and should be respected. Athletic officials are seldom given the appreciation they deserve. They are given the responsibility and authority to enforce the rules of the game. Both schools have selected and agreed upon tonight's officials and ask that you support them in a positive manner. Bashup ISD would like to welcome all visiting and home fans to tonight's game and ask them that together we model good sportsmanship and respect for all before, during, and after the game. Thank you for supporting the hard work of players, coaches, and officials. Enjoy the game. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a special announcement from our superintendent of schools, Barry good Edwards. Evening, and welcome to Bastrop Memorial Stadium. I am Barry Edwards, the proud superintendent of schools in the Bastrop Independent School District. We are so happy that you have joined us here this evening, and we want you to fully enjoy your experience while you're here in BISD. Enjoy the game. The officials for this game have been mutually agreed upon by both schools. The rules not unlike those of players, coaches, teachers, and school administrators. Without them, this game would not be possible. Their knowledge and application of the rules are a result of annual testing, years of study, and continual participation in clinics that further refine their understanding of the game. We ask that you, as students, parents, and citizens, demonstrate the kind of respect for these officials you would extend to any dedicated person in a position of responsibility. The officials for tonight are from the Austin Football Officials Association, a chapter of the Texas Association of Sports Officials. Terrence Terry McCann. Thomas Tom Hartley. Chad Zimmerman, Aaron Webb, Douglas Morgan, John Gendry, Dan McDaniel Pecos, Ian Rodriguez, Tony Hall, Drew McDaniel, and Randall Kirtley. Ladies and gentlemen, also pursuant to Bastrop Independent School District Board Policy and State Law, all public school property in Bastrop ISD prohibits the use of tobacco products, cigarettes of any kind, including e-cigarettes and vapes, alcohol, drugs, or firearms. Also, Memorial Stadium does not allow in and out privileges during the game or at halftime. If you leave, you must pay to re-enter. Please do not leave the stadium if you plan to come back or you will be charged to re-enter. And ladies and gentlemen, fans are not allowed on the field at any time tonight, as well as noisemakers. Noisemakers are not allowed in the stands. You will be asked to leave. Please do not enter the field at any time before, during, or after the game. Thank you for your cooperation. And now for sentiment from our athletic director, Elliot Allen. Tonight's football game. I'm Elliot Allen, the athletic director here. We'd like to take a moment to thank the generosity of our sponsors for Memorial Stadium. Please join us in supporting our local businesses just as they have supported our local athletes. Enjoy the game.
as we were watching also for the weather during this time, as we're looking at the radar as we go, and we will make announcements as the night goes on. If lightning happens, we will let you know. But ladies and gentlemen, if you look to the center of the field, you'll notice we have our lovely high school cheerleaders out here, and I'd love to announce them for you tonight. The VHS Varsity Cheerleading Squad for 2023-24. Seniors, co-captain Sierra Alexander. Michaela Flores. Captain and cheerleader of the week, Sydney Moylan. Riley Renshaw. Ladies and gentlemen, our juniors, Claire Adams. Avery Chapman. Ella Davis. Laney Kincaid. Elena Steitler. Rihanna Williams. And our sophomores, Lily and Gregory, Ava Pace, Piera Patino, and Kylie Weldon Diaz. Ladies and gentlemen, these are your 2023-24 cheerleaders and put your hands together and make some noise. And ladies and gentlemen, if you will turn your attention to our visiting side, we are glad to have everyone here. From Liberty Hill, thank you parents for coming out here in this weather and supporting your children out of here. And ladies and gentlemen, we would like everybody on the visiting side to stand up as we turn the performance over to the Liberty Hill Panther Band as they play their school song. Good job, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for them. They've had a great. And now everyone on the home side, ladies and gentlemen, Bastrop Bear side, if you're wearing maroon, please stand up as the Bastrop Bear Band plays their school song. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the Bass Rock Bear Band, Always Sun and Green.
Welcome, welcome everybody to tonight's ball game between your Liberty Hill Panthers and the Bastrop Bears. Liberty Hill goes on the road in Bastrop to play the Bears, who are on the season five and four and two and three. Liberty Hill coming in here still with a chance to win the district championship. They need to win tonight, and they'll have a showdown next week with Hyper if they do. Hello everybody, this is Tim Dean along with my partner in no crime, Greg Ceridi. How you doing, Greg? Buddy, ready to go out here at a beautiful field in Bastrop. This is such a nice field, Tim. We're under a little bit of a rain delay, weather delay, lightning delay. Try to think about the safety of the players and the crowd, but uh, ready to play some football here in a little bit and I'm excited about it yeah we've been here twice before two times last year uh for to play Cedar Creek and then I think for the first round of the playoffs we were here as well really nice facility uh not the easiest to get to in and out but uh, nonetheless a beautiful facility Liberty Hill uh, is needing to win tonight to set up that big showdown next week with uh Piper possibly Greg well, it, you know, Piper's already in, right? They're playing for the district championship next week, regardless of what happens. They're they're good to go. Uh, Liberty Hill's got to punch their ticket, and the Bears are standing in front of them. Had a chance to talk to some of the Bears coaches before the game, and, and they said, you know, it, really it comes down to uh, injuries here for this Bears team. Which one is going to show up? They're on their – last week, Tim, they were on their fourth – quarterback oh. and this this week uh, they got number three back so uh, down the jet chart on the on the signal caller probably be a something to look at over the course of the game well Greg you can't a team can't complain about injuries when Liberty Hill has been actually peppered with them this year and, and the adversity they've had with with players being out has, is really uh, astronomical I've never seen it run through a Liberty Hill team like we have this year. But Greg, they are surviving. They are set, they're in contention to win the district championship, which is what they want to be at this point of the season, every season. They've never lost a 5A district in the history of the school, right? They've won every single district, every 5A district that they've been in. They've been the champions. So they have a chance tonight to, to keep that streak going with, with, with a W and a showdown against Piper next week and you're right Tim you had mentioned it before I think it was game two or three uh, that you said it looked like a mash unit out there there was six or seven kids on crutches a bunch of them out of uniform and yeah. and it really is a, a next man up mentality you hear it all the time but it's you know something that 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 uh, this Liberty Hill team is is living through and um, you know, maybe exceeding expectations when some of those players come down and some of these younger guys are getting in and, and making making big plays. Obviously, Tim, it all revolves around the slot T and the running game led by Ben Carter. Ben Carter has played every game. He has been the definitely the workhorse uh, for this team this season and, and done a great job. You just worry about sometimes, you know, him wearing down, but he has really showed no signs of doing that you know, so far this season, he's, he's done a fantastic job uh, so far from that fullback position. Last year, a complimentary back, right? And you say he mm -hmm. complimented Noah, and, and really when you gave it to Ben, maybe defenses were focused on Noah or focused on Joe and, uh, and weren't so much keying on what Ben was doing. But this season, everybody knows what he can do. you got to keep an eye on him, yep. and he still is going to pick up six, seven yards, it seems like, every single time at least. Uh, those big first downs that he gets uh, really a, a key to this offense to get it rolling. Well, they are bringing the flags out onto the middle of the field, so we're going to take a moment to pause to honor our nation, honor our nation's flag, and have the national anthem. And Chief Petty Officer James Repass. Once the colors are presented, the playing of the national anthem tonight will be performed by some special guests. We ask that you remain standing until the colors have vacated the field.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are super excited tonight to have guests in the booth with me to sing the national anthem tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you please remove cover as we honor the great nation, the United States of America, with the playing of the national anthem. Performed tonight by special guests Randy Phillips and Garland Creedle. Greg, as I sit here there in the National Anthem, we look out and, and start to see all the umbrellas start to pop up. We are getting what I would consider uh, a steady drizzle, and I don't even call it a drizzle, a steady rain coming from, uh, uh, you know, coming down onto the field. Greg, tell me, I mean, because I played center, so, you know, I didn't really care that much. So, But tell me about the impact of the rain and then this condition in this football game? You know, for both teams, it really is going to impact them uh, greatly. Liberty Hill obviously running the ball all the time. The, the handoffs that are, are meant to be quick, um, you know, and you want to get it in. You want to have ball security. You want to hide it. You want to make the fakes. And so that ball being slick is really going to, uh, ha have an impact on that not being as smooth as it is and we've already seen this team struggle with the center to quarterback exchange Tim yep. and and you've talked about it before how it's always the quarterback's fault never the center's fault mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it, you know the truth is it, it, that's a tough exchange it happens so fast your your job as a center is to get that ball back there as fast as you can so you can get out and yep. make your block and a quarterback has to has to grab it quick and get out so it is it is really a you know, people take it for granted, and as a center, you know how important it is. But people do take it grant, take for granted that exchange and how important it is on starting the offense. On the other side of the ball, Bastrop, their third quarterback, um, third string quarterback. So, you know, he's already not getting the reps over the summer that he would have wanted to, or playing with the first team like yeah. he would have wanted to, and now. Uh, in a situation where he's going to have to perform, uh, the ball being a little slick tends to get lost on your spiral out of control, literally. So from the center position, you know, that's what I played, you know, all through high school. Uh, just how it affected me. Craig, I was a one-hand snapper, right? And so I would bend down and put one hand on the ball, and my left hand was up, you know, didn't go down to the ground. It stayed up, of course, with my chest. So I could snap the ball, the big hands, I snapped the ball, no problem. In the conditions like this, what Greg, what I would do is I'd still go down to the same stance, but I would bring my left hand in, Greg, to to just steady the ball. So I'd it, it start off with both hands on the ball, but my left hand was on there lightly, just to steady the ball, to start the snap process, to start the momentum, you know, towards the quarterback. And as I lifted the ball as the ball came off the turf that left hand came off the ball and I was able to continue the momentum of the football uh, towards the quarterback's hands so that is what I did to compensate slippery balls <laughs> to get to the quarterback so it didn't really affect me as much as you might think 
Well, and and Tim, what what did, what did your quarterback do to deal with the slippery balls? So I would actually put I had a he would put a towel behind my tuck it into the back of my pants and he would actually every time he came up he'd dry his hands off before I delivered the ball. So it ended up being okay and so uh, we didn't have as many problems on the quarterback uh, center had changed because I that and also Greg that was my quarterback since the eighth grade. So we had a lot of reps together. Super and, familiar. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. So, uh, it, it, again impactful right that's that's a huge that's a huge deal serious so liberty hill looks like they've won the t- toss again Greg. do we even need to say it anymore and they are going to kick off and you can see they're in all they're, they're all whites Greg. we don't see this very often no you were, you were having a discussion with a, a media person about the all whites i love the all whites i absolutely do i think they're they're a, a great look for them you know Coach Walker, Coach Jeff Walker, you know, would talk about how he likes to wear the purples because you can hide the ball better. But, man, the whites look good. Greg, look at the return guys at the 15 against (laughs) Hawkins. No chance. And I just – that was interesting. (laughs) Maybe they're waiting for the – there's the team running down to the field. Maybe they're waiting for a a pooch kick or they know – it really doesn't do them any good, Tim, to stand on the five or the three because – they're not going to return it out, and so they that's fair. maybe they play defense against that pooch. That's that's fair. I did, you know, but you know, if they hit a ball that hit inside the five and sort of bounced up, you know, they're thinking it's going to roll out. But no, but I, that's the first time we've seen that. I think that's a that's even a more fair point. If you see him up that far, you try to kick it. He should maybe take a little off and try to hit it on the five or the All right. four. All right, first play of the game here for the Bears. The Bears. Quarterback comes back, throws it downfield on his first try. The quarterback is Braden Tuck. And I tell you what, Tuck threw a nice ball there, but uh, number four, Keyshawn Moore, is a burner. Wow, did he get off the line quick. Look for him. Number four downfield tonight because he can run fast. Greg, he he is their top receiver. With 11 touchdowns on the year. He is quick. Again, Tuck throws it out to the outside. And really good defensive play by the Panthers. Great tackle. In space. Can't coach it. Sebastian Evans. Big play by Evans. He gets dapped up by Carson Holland there. It is third and eight after a two-yard gain. Little spread out five receivers. Panthers looking at their coaches for some help. Quarterback under pressure. Vallejo. And where are they going to mark this play? They're going to give him the first down, Greg. Mm. They're going to give it to him. Bad spot by the top judge, the this judge here probably had it a little bit more accurate. Greg Vallejo got in there, and I want you to look at the mammoth of an offensive tackle he's going up against. Number, Number 75 for Bastrop. Absolutely. Is he is the biggest man on the field. Jackson Taylor Jr. Tim, he's bigger than you are. And off left-hand side to Ladanian Marino. Greg Ladanian is a running back name, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Ladanian, absolutely. If you're named Ladanian, I think you have, have to, play to play running, running back. back. Yep. yep, and so they, he, Marino gets the carry. Another junior, this roster peppered with a bunch of underclassmen. Second and nine, balls on the left-hand hash. Again, you notice Liberty Hill's in there all whites. It's a little... Unusual to see that. Throws it up in the air and incomplete pass. No flags on the play. (laughs) Hands in the air. Hands in the air as pressure was coming from the backside. Caleb Nicholas. 
chasing Tuck as he was running out to try to complete that pass. Great job there by Nicholas. Third Obvious long. passing down right here, third and nine. They're mostly a passing team. You see their wideouts, too, on both sides of the field. Tuck throws it out into the flat again. And it is going to be close to another first down. They're going to give it to him again. Keyshawn Moore takes that short hitch pass, makes the first man miss. Great play call there. Getting one of the fastest players in space. Another first down for the Bears. Ball there is on the right-hand hash. Wide side of the field to your left. Hand off right up to middle. Vallejo, Knox, Nicholas. Looked like Manat was in there as well. Nothing doing. Pan uh, the, the Bears. Tim, not able to run the ball as it looks like. You know, they really haven't had one decent run so far. They're getting all their yardage through there. There's a pickup of three, second and seven. Their speed receivers are down here bottom of your screen. They're looking for him. And incomplete pass. The receiver got his feet tangled up. He did. He looked like he tripped on the 45. Jalen Groton on the intended receiver, but he fell down when he tried to make a direction change. Brings up another third down, Greg. The Liberty Hill has been able to get the Bears in third and long situation, but the Bears have picked up this third down twice. Both with short passes. The speed is on the left-hand side, the upper side of your screen here. Groton and Keyshawn Moore, the quarterback's looking that way. Now he's run out of the pocket. He's throwing it up in the air and it's going out of bounds. And it is fourth down. Great pressure again by Nicholas coming off of that right side, forcing Tuck to get out and he there, the Bears are going to have to punt it now. Greg, Nicholas is a name we have not called that much this year, but wow, is he putting some pressure on the quarterback? Well, I tell you what, Tim, I did call it, and I said it was, I said Nichols. Remember, his dad was listening, and I'm sure that Mr. Nicholas is rich right now, yeah. but we have been calling his name right around that time. I started mentioning it more as he's, as he's starting to settle in yes. to his linebacker position and, and, and being aggressive and in on tackles. He is uh, playing well. Oh, make, uh, he's a, making a difference. A, uh, a junior running back. And, and now, right, he, he, Tim, we talk about it when, when sophomores start playing through the year and they become, you know, they become that next class up. We talked about it with Noah Long when he was a freshman. Uh, deep into the season, he's a sophomore and, and, and whatnot. Same thing with Jack. I think Nicholas is same kind of stuff. He, he really is kind of letting the game come to him and, and playing really well and, and getting to the quarterback and making tackles, making plays. Greg, I want you to, I want to point out the front for Bastrop. Look how tight they are. There's a flag on the play. It's a handoff to Ben Carter. I think they're going to get him for offsides. The Bears? Yeah. You said they were tight. They were too tight. Tim Dean, eye of an eagle. Already sniffed that one out. I'm sure the coaching staff for Liberty Hill saw that as well, and they will make adjustments immediately. Well, Greg, they have five down linemen, and you don't see that very often. It was a penalty, offsides penalty, but just take a look at the line, the alignment of the Bears, how they're five down linemen. When I say that, their hand in the dirt, the hand on the grass. I think there's another flag. Nope, they didn't call it. And off right-hand side, a pickup of a couple. That was Noah Long on the carry. Second and three. Greg, I think that they're, they, they, 
purposely doing this five-man front on defense, trying to slow down, especially Ben Carter. Flag on the play, hand off left-hand side, not Again, much there. Again, they're going to get him for offsides. Somebody on that Bastrop team is just a little too far over where they should be. You got to check with it or you got to check that ball. Somebody is leaning too far. Or, and they got him twice now. Same referee throwing the same flag. Well, you know, the Bears coach has got to be upset that they gave up a first down to, uh, to Liberty Hill after making three stops, Greg. That's right. Carter and and Noah Long twice. And the, and the Panthers still pick up the first down. Gray, they've got to loosen this defense up by getting outside the tackle. They've got to loosen it up a little bit. Well, they hand off to Carter, and he's off to the races. He's gone. He is gone for a 53-yard touchdown run. Well, that's going to happen, Tim, when you're going to put all those guys in the box. If you get to the yeah. second level, that's true. Wow, it's just going to be one on one, and Ben Carter, no chance for the Bears after he breaks through that five man front. You did mention it right. Just that that getting past that first level is key, and once you get past that, that is it's 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 tough. Carter on the hold here, slippery ball, the miss. Still falling. As a holder, this has got to be very difficult. And that's exactly what happened. Fire. Ben Carter's running around trying to get He's in got the it. He's, He's got, got it. it. He does. <laughs> Two-point conversion. Greg, we were just talking about how slippery it was, and that's exactly what happened. It is tough, Tim. And we, We've said it before. Uh, you know, that was – you were the long snapper. I was a holder. I uh, did it my entire career from the time I was a sophomore all the way through. And, uh, man, that ball slick, it's coming back quick. Your job as a center is to get it back quick. And, listen, sometimes it's not a spiral, buddy. That thing comes back wampus. And uh, you got to be able to catch it, get it down so that your kicker can, you know, don't give him the laces, all that stuff, right? Uh, ben Carter made the best out of that situation. And we had his dad on at halftime, and he let us know that that is the call, fire, fire. And uh, that's his second two-point run of the season off of a botched, yeah. uh, either a high snap or that one. It looked like it was into his body a little bit, but the slickness of the ball uh, didn't help. And there they are, Tim, on the 15. I, I mean, I might if I'm if I'm the coach here, I say take a little off it and stick it on the five yard line. Let's see if we can get uh, Spina to, to to turn over to look, show where how far they how shallow they are on the left hand side, where the receiver guys are. So you can see that's the front line. Go back to the ten yard line, Jack, where we can see the right there on the 10 the 15 yard line uh here comes the kick Muzzle. hawkins is gonna kick it way over their head yeah. <laughs> there oh it goes. it's out of the end zone out of the end zone no chance greg i am excited to see the kickoff team sprinting to the end zone i do too they Some must have listened to us a few weeks ago someone heard us saying you know what they're just not hustling down there like they used to. They, I remember when they used to race, and it was Luke Miller. He was always winning, and we were excited about it. We used to watch it all the time. The yes. first two kicks of this game uh, have been just like that. So kudos to this special teams uh, unit for the Panthers hustling hard. Nothing doing. And off to Marino right up the middle. Absolutely nothing doing on the run. Avery Manat, Samuel Knox. Greg, how would you like to have a name? Ladanian Marino. That's you got I, two football names there, right? You got you you know you're a football player with that name. <laughs> Absolute Ladanian Marino. Franco Montana. Would that be one right there? <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> Short pass incomplete. Bring up third again and long, Greg. Here we go, third and ten. I see 
You see the quarterback there talk, talking to his, talking to Keyshawn as he goes back to the huddle. They saw something or they, they did something. Do that all the time as a receiver, Tim. You're always going to tell the quarterback that you're open no matter what happens. But you're going to go back there and say, hey, man, I can get him on this or I can get him on that. Look for number four on this play. Oh, yeah. I think he's definitely going to Keyshawn Moore. They're talking the, again. Who is uh, the second receiver from the top of your screen. He's looking at him right now, throws it, and it is complete to uh, Jalen Gratton. And that's a first round, about a 12-yard game. Moore ran, the, Moore ran the clear out, and Gratton came underneath. They ran the post clear with Moore, and he cleared the safeties out, and uh, Gratton came underneath, and great step up and throw by Tuck as coach patted him on the helmet, just letting him know. What a good throw it was. He stepped up into it and put it on the money. Great catch as well. 16-yard gain. Interesting enough, the quarterback is coming over where Aiden Tuck to get the plays from the coach from the sidelines each time. Hand off to Marino up the middle. No short, chance. Short gain of one. And look, at here he comes. Tuck's coming to the sideline. And this is, this is actually the inexperienced, Greg, of the going to your third-string quarterback and he's not even listed yeah he is listed a quarterback but you're talking about guys that a guy that probably hasn't had as many snaps and just wants to boost his confidence right come over talk to him everything's okay give him the play call he's going to run a lot of miles tonight now that's the coach i was talking to before the game right there and he was saying he's just never had to deal with so many injuries at this position so so, Greg, you had an inside source right there. I, were, I really did. I, we were we were in the elevator together, so it was – and great job, great scramble there by Tuck. Oh, oh Samuel no. Knox going to get it. Oh, that was so unnecessary for the Panthers. For two reasons. One, didn't need to do it. Two, he didn't even knock him over. If you're going to get a penalty, at least knock him over. But is that just, it, Greg? Is that what you're saying? You just got to make it. If you're going to push them. Uh, if you're going to get 15 yards, make it worth it. That's, again, what the, my, my coach, my defensive coach, Scott Reiner, he would absolutely say that. <laughs> he had a cup of coffee with the Buffalo Bills. He also played for the Scranton Eagles, Tim. That's in Pennsylvania. Somewhere. Scranton Eagles, Tim. Is that a semi-pro team? Tim, national champions, Tim. A college team? They were a semi-pro team. Okay. So they national champions, they beat another team from Pennsylvania. <laughs> for I think they beat a team from Texas. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Nobody can do that. <laughs> There's got to be a hold. Oh, oh it's man. complete down the sideline, and he's still on his feet and tackled. That is Jalen Groton again inside the five. I am not sure how they did not get a hold there on the on the on Vallejo and Morris. Look like there's three guys on Vallejo holding him the whole time as he's trying to get to Tuck. Another great catch by Groton and run afterwards though. Greg, it's actually a pretty good rush with only three guys rushing. They're they're doing a good job. We said the same thing about Nicholas. You have to say about Vallejo, a difference maker, constantly double teamed. You have to know where 56 is. Although maybe not double teamed with number 75 out there. It's a matchup we're going to see next year as well. I have a feeling both those boys are going to be on some postseason teams. Pass to the oh end Almost intercepted. Wow, mistake by Tuck. Manat. Oh, it's Aiden Camarina, actually, number four. Stepped in front. Great read by Camarina. So the field's going to shorten a little bit here, right? And so it's going to be, uh, you know, a little bit advantage to the defense when, when, when the quarterback is going to drop and pass because they're just not going to have to run off. You can't. Get rid of those safeties. They're going to be up there. Camarina stepped in front. Tim, he might have gone the distance. Second and goal. Top receivers are on 
the upper part of the screen. They're looking for him, throws it to the back of the end zone. In and out of the hands. It hit him in the chest, Greg. It looked like it. It looked like it just went right through his hands into his chest again. This missed. Affecting the ball game. Another third down for the Bears. They have lived on third down. They really so have this game. We have four minutes left to go in the first quarter. Liberty Hill leads eight to nothing. Now they've split their top receivers to different sides of the field. There's a flag down. It's a false start. Wow. Greg, in this situation, that could help the Bears, right? Backing up and getting a little bit more field to work We with. just talked about the field being uh, compressed and that quarterback not really having the uh, as much uh, space maybe to, to throw into. That's a good point. They're going to get a little bit of room to run here. Under pressure, throws it towards the end zone. Incomplete. Fourth down. Greg, you go for it or kick a field goal. I think they're going to kick the field goal yeah. here. I, I Is mean, that what the book says. I, do you, you third string, third string quarterback? You're playing against a team that you're yeah. just kind of moving the ball on. You just maybe want to get a positive out of this. Get, get you know, well, get some points on the board. Here's the same situation mm -hmm. with a wet field. The, the rain is not coming down like it was, but the ball's still probably a little slick. And there's a timeout. It, something happened there. Communication. They had to burn a timeout on a field goal attempt, Greg. Not the ideal situation. And maybe they were short of guy or something. Good job to get the T.O. though. Well, eight to nothing here in the first quarter of play. Liberty Hill holds Bastrop. The first drive and takes over and gets a long touchdown run from Ben Carter of like 52, 55 yards. I had it at 56. I could be wrong. Yeah. Sounds right. We don't have a official stat keeper. We sort of get them from uh, the Liberty Hill Independent at halftime. We get some little updates. Greg, Greg, uh, they're our friends and helps us out with some of the halftime stats. Here's the field goal attempt. Scott Anglewitz. Oh yeah, love Scott. Kick is up, and we run into the kicker, and, and the kick is good gets the good. The kicker got his foot stepped on. So it's eight to three, bottom of the seventh. <laughs> Isaac Duggar. Speaking of baseball, you and our teams are both done for the season. My team was done almost as soon as the season started. Oh, you are not a Phillies fan. You follow another. That's team. right. I'm the I'm a New York Mets fan. So oh yeah, yeah. There you go. That, that let let that sink in. You know what they do? They're in the top three for spending the most money. They do spend a lot of money. And there are some Mets pitchers pitching in the World Series. They started on the Mets roster. Unfortunately, they're on the Rangers now. Yeah, and there was one on the Astros that are paying oh, the, the Verlander's salary. And the Mets are still paying those salaries. They are. They are. <laughs> they're also paying Bobby Bonilla, too. So it's just a... Isn't that crazy? When, you know, people, if you don't know what we're talking about, pull up Bobby Bonilla and when's the last year he, he played. He is still getting paid by the Mets. All my friends will send me uh, stuff on Bobby Onside Bonilla. Onside kick. Day. Good job. Up. Austin and Fulford picks it up. There by 11, and there's flags on the play. They're, 
I don't know, they may not get off sides, but Liberty Hill will definitely decline this. And yeah, there it looks like it's off sides. Greg, you were looking away from the screen when that they did this on weird, weird onside kick. They kicked it to the side where there was only one player of theirs on the that side. They were definitely deception trying to be. But decline the offside penalty. Liberty Hill is Oh, it's a false start on mm. the kickoff team. I didn't know that could happen. And now Liberty Hill has the ball on the 35-yard line. Ouch. I'm not sure that's where you want to try to run that play at this point in the game. But nonetheless, here we are. Tried to make a play. Bastrop needs to win tonight to keep their hopes alive for the playoffs. So they have a shot, but they, they're they needing a win. Quarterback run. Pitchford runs it to the 30. Picks up five. That is a weapon when Jack is running well and he can do that fake uh, step and then push off. Joe Pitchford not playing tonight, unfortunately. Another injury for Joe. Hope to have him back next week. He might be like on a cruise or mini vacation or something. Who knows? And off right hand side, that is DJ Seaborn picking up the first down. Nice to see DJ getting some carries. DJ Seaborn, the ball carrier. Good run by Seaborn there. Greg, you talk about missing games for vacation. So the state tournament in basketball is always right around spring break, right? And so here in Texas, I remember several years ago, oh man, it's probably been 20. I'll, I'll finish the story right after this. First and 10 for the Panthers. Ben Carter still on his feet, picks up nine. Quintessential Ben Carter run for nine yards right up the middle after he gets hit after one yard. So Greg, you, you plan a cruise way in advance, right? So uh, this family planned this cruise for spring break. Well, the basketball team that this kid, one of the kids of the family was on, kept winning and winning and winning and winning and made it to the state tournament. And the, and the parents hand off to Noah Long, spins out at one tackle, stays on the feet, stayed on his feet, gets into the flag down, looks like there's holding it's coming back. Wow, what a run by it Noah. It was a great run, but I, I wonder it's if it's back. after. No. It looked like it was after the no, play. It was, it was not. No. Nope. It's a hold. Coming back. So, Greg, mama on this team made the kid go on the cruise because they paid for it, and he had to miss playing in the – and he was one of their starters – playing in the state basketball tournament. Wow. Once in a lifetime thing. Wow. You can go on any cruise you want. Yeah, but mom said, nope, you're going. We've been planning this for a year. You're going. And mm. it was from a small town, Greg. So it wasn't a 5A, 6A team that could push somebody in there. This was like probably like a 2A team or something. Hand off to Ben Carter. He gets some of it back. Gets to the 20. He'll bring up third and five. I don't remember what the team did, Greg, whether they won state that year or not. It just doesn't matter. You just, you just, you just can't get that back. No, you can't. Mm. Pitch to Noah Long. He's not getting out of this one, Greg. They stop him for no gain. No, he, he didn't. He was spun back under. Fourth down. Do you let, let him kick it? Yep, here he goes. This is going to be a what would amount to a 36-ish. Yard field goal. It's on the 20, so I. But seven, right? Plus 10? Let's see where they. Yep, 37. 37 yard field goal. <laughs> Bastrop loosens up on the kick on defense. Let's hope for a good snap and hold here. Got it. Kicks up. Good. good. Nice kick there from our great kicker, Connor Hawkins. 
He's missed his last two field goals, Tim. One of them was from 55 yards, and he just hit the crossbar. The other one, from, I think, was about 47. He just came up, just came up short. So good to see him get on the board. So this is a the the third kicker in a long line of. This is the fourth kicker in a row that have been blue chip kickers here at Liberty Hill. And Mr. Jack Spina informs me that there's another one lurking down in the lower classifications. Don't know his name, but he did say there's one lurking down there that is also projected possibly to be another great kicker. Liberty Hill. Yeah, kicker you. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> Slot T and kicker mafia. Fogging up the inside of the booth here. I, Greg, talking. I know. I'm up in the mezzanine section. And up here, uh, calling the game up here, I, I, I get that little frosty on the, on the screen more than you. I'm underneath it down here. I can. You can feel it. It goes out of the end zone. Greg, so we now have an 11 to three game. Greg, I called a game. Now you and I have missed years, not together, but separately over the years, right? That's right. Um, Where you've been a part of it and I wasn't, I've been a part of yeah. it and you weren't, we had other things going on and we've, right. we've kind of. So Greg, there was a game a one year. I don't know if you were part of the crew when we were doing it, that there was a fog and literally i could barely see what was going on in the field and so if, if you don't remember that it was one of the years that we didn't do it together but it was really rough that the fog was so thick that it was really hard to start the game and, and call it incomplete pass on first down i I, I might not remember that one but i do remember the night after coach walker had passed mm -hmm. that game uh, and the fog that settled on the field that's true that i have yet to see and you know it was a it was a yep. pretty special moment for uh, i think everybody in the crowd at just you know liberty hill playing for for the first time after coach walker had passed and I, that was a thick thick fog that night too and off to Marino up the middle, no gain. Brings up another third down for the Bears. Coaching staff right next to us in the booth. Sometimes coaches get mad, so they may bang things or throw them around. So, folks, if you hear that, that <laughs> did something get banged? Or uh, yes, I believe that was a defensive coordinator here in the booth next to us. Well, they're not even on defense. I meant offensive. Third down, and ten to go. Well. That's going to do it for the first quarter. First quarter is over. 11 to 3. Liberty Hill's up. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the first quarter. We'll take a quick break, Greg. Are you ready for this? We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back to the start of the second quarter. You're listening to Liberty Hill Football and Bike Media. Interested in Bike Campus? Bike Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vibe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vibe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vibe Campus today. Here to start the second quarter of play, Greg Ceridi, Jack Spina, Coach Les Clary in the house doing some quality control as we get set to start this second quarter of play. Trying to get the camera set up because of the fog setting in into our booth.
And started off, we'll have the Bastrop Bears coming out on offense. Another third and long. Yep. Looking for the speedsters. Flushed out again. Throws it downfield. Incomplete pass. That time also to Groton. And he was not able to hang on to that. Brings up fourth down. Am I right? It was it should be fourth down. It should be fourth down. They kept the three on there for some reason. Greg, I thought I just called it was a third down. There it is. Yep. There it goes. You're okay. Right. Bastrop's got some big size kids on their team, Greg. I mean, several of them. Matter of fact, Greg, the uh, interesting enough, number 55 on defense, Tiki Mola, is a four underclassman, four star recruit. Oh, what a great bounce. Gets across the 20. What a great bounce by the kicker. Isaac Duggar kicking the ball. Picked up by Andy McCarris. Down the 20-yard line. Tried to rub the glass there. It is definitely on the outside. Here we go. Panthers back on offense. They're leading 11 to three. Pitch for hands off to Carter. Gets three yards on first down, maybe four. If, if it wasn't rainy and the ball wasn't slick, I have a feeling that this coaching staff would have already dialed up a play to loosen up the nine, eight to nine players that are in the box for these Bears. Safety's walking up, really like the only, the corners are the only ones that aren't. Now to Noah Long, gets close to a first down, it'll be a yard short. Great to see 21 out there running passionately. Third and one. This is usually a Ben Carter spot right here. It is. Hand off to Carter, and he gets the first down and more. A pickup of about 14 yards. Now, Tim, you weren't here a couple weeks ago when uh, – I was calling the game with Melvin Jones, mm -hmm. and the defense that, that we had called uh, that night, it, they had been stepping up into the box and trying to time the snap of uh, Liberty Hill. I'm watching Bastrop try to do it as well, where they're just really trying to time the snap right as it goes. Um, obviously, jumping the snap can wreak havoc for the timing of this offense. Bryce Machaw on the carry. Greg, fun fact about Bryce Machaw. Here we go. All right, fun fact is he could do something you and I cannot do other than carry the ball. He could do a backflip. What? Yes. Hand off to Noah Long, left-hand side. Not much. A yard or two. Yes, a backflip. That's impressive. It is impressive. It's very athletic. And know. his football uniform would be even more impressive. Well, he probably could. I, I would bet that he could. He's a great athlete. I have video evidence that he can do wow. a Wow, video yes. evidence. Video evidence. It is third down, ladies and gentlemen, third and seven. Third down, seven yards third to go. Let's seven. see what Liberty Hill dials up here. And off the Ben Carter up the middle, and he's going to get the first down. Yeah, third and long. What do you do? Give it to your fullback up the middle. Give it to your fullback who happens to be the smallest running back on the team. Or Maybe the, the, on the field. The, you can hear the boos from Liberty Hill. Now, now Jack Pitchford not. Oh, they didn't give him the first down. Joe not here in the stadium. They called the, him short. The brotherly shot. 
that's, that's what nice. they were booing. To call Ben Carter short. I didn't say short. I said small. Um, small. the brotherly the brotherly shove there. Yes. Jack Pitchford and yeah, Joe Pitchford. A la the Philadelphia Eagles. Fly Eagles fly. The play that is just devastating on fourth and one. Off left hand side. I think that's Carter. I'm not sure. It was off the left side. Pick up a four. Ben Carter once again the ball carrier, the senior for the Liberty Hill Panthers. Five yards on the carry. Second down and six to go. Passing play. Throws it into the ground. Are they going to call it a fumble, though? Incomplete pass, says the ref. Incomplete pass. And the ball looked like it slipped out of his hand as Jack was trying to throw it. And the ref made the call demonstrably. It was the right call. It was the right call. But you can see how... The Bastrop team is upset. The coach out on the field. Is that your buddy from the elevator? That is. That is. Absolutely. And off the Noah Long left-hand side. And he breaks loose and going down the sideline. Needs one block. Great block. Touchdown, Noah Long, if it stands. No flags. Touchdown, Noah Long. Oh. The pendulum swings from what could have been bare ball after a fumble. Noah Long takes it on third and long to the house, Tim. 41-yard touchdown run for Long after it looked like he was stopped in the backfield. It did. I think they had him, and he, he was able to get out. Snaps back. And it's good. And that is going to make the score 18 to 3 here in the second quarter of play. It's an odd score. Not sure how many 18 to 3 ball games we've been a part of. Folks, if you're watching at home, you can see the fog on the screen unfortunately there's nothing we can do about that except send young jack spina outside and with a window washing kit <laughs> uh, i don't even know if he can reach wait open. here it comes you thought i was kidding and literally folks is you're gonna, gonna stop though is you're gonna, gonna see on well, I don't think that those guys need those to have Those guys it. don't need it. Hopefully, he's coming all the way down. He absolutely is. We're about to get a window wash, folks. I don't know. First, it's, it's, a, it's a squeegee. And this is a squeegee. And the first time in the history yes, of Bite Media, Bite Media, are we, we going to get the squeegee? You're about to, to see it. Here we go, Jack. You're on it. Get the squeegee online. Here it is, folks. Do we have to tip him, Greg? The I don't. Maybe. Maybe. Here it comes. There we go. Get the get the squeegee, man. Uh, oh, folks, look at how much better that picture oh, is. Oh, yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> we'll give him a thumbs up there. Wow, Bastrop ISD in the house getting it done. I'm not sure why we need it. I think the coaches should get it first. Give it to the coaches first. We don't need it. The coaches need it. No, our fans need it, Greg. No, we, <laughs> I mean, we, it was just it was just kickoff. It was just kickoff. One of the coaches gave me a thumbs up for that one. They agree. <laughs> they need to be able to see. They're working. Working hard. Having Greg. to deal with this Russian offense of Liberty Hill. There you go, folks. You can see it now. Greg, I got an update from Aunt Ginger. Well, come on, Aunt Ginger. She's not listening. Oh, you know, she's she's real busy. She she bought her she got her a new got her a new home, and and so she's you know she's living it living the dream, but not able to get the games right now. So missing Aunt Ginger for sure. Glad she checked in though. Tell her that we're 
There goes Moore. Oh, and he caught it. One man to beat. And Greg, he kicks on the afterburner, and he scores a 75-yard touchdown pass to get back into this game. Well, maybe they should come back and put the fog back on the windows because <laughs> that right there allowed this coaching staff to see and dial up a great play more wide open. Great ball by Tuck as well. Eighteen to nine, pinning the PAT. Kick is up. Looks like it's good, and it is good. It's going to be eighteen to ten with seven minutes and twenty-two seconds left to go until halftime. Eighteen to ten, the Panthers still leading. And remember, they won the toss. They will get the ball to start the second half. They always get the ball to start they, the second I, half. I, I, Greg, if they've lost, they have not. Flip, they I'm telling you, they. I don't think they've lost one all season. Greg, it's already fogging back up the, the, the glass. So, folks, there's not much we can do. As you see this, uh, the the picture getting a little foggier. It's not the fog on the outside. It's our glass to the press box is is fogging, frosting over, whatever you want to call it. And they, the squeegee man just came by, and already it started to come back. So doing the best we can. Another onside kick, Greg! He's going to take it. Lines. He's going to take the it. Sidelines. Austin Fulford for the score. They tried to catch him unawares. Fulford said, not today. And he takes it to the house. Onside kick touchdown for the Panthers. Greg. After the biggest play of the game for the Bears, all the momentum back. With the Panthers. Greg, that's two onside kicks that attempted that Liberty Hill's been able to pick up and run back for some yardage. That one actually bit him, and he was full for able to take it the distance. Just when they get back in the game. Oh. That's a backbreaker. It is. Get it. A backbreaker for this Bear team who just really couldn't yep. get anything going offensively until Tuck finds Moore. We knew, we knew it was going to be a matter of time yes. before Moore got loose. No way you're going to contain him all right. game long. He is just an absolute burner. Oh, absolutely. And so, you know, credit this coaching staff and, and, and this Bear team for finding a way to get him in space. But then try to build on that momentum. They went for the onside kick again. Liberty Hill made it made it hurt. Greg, this, this Bass Drop team is so young, right? I mean – uh, all the top receivers are juniors. Their quarterback is junior. All the quarterbacks are juniors. They're, they're, you know, their big right tackle, Jackson Taylor, a junior. The blue chip defensive, Tika Hola is a, a, a sophomore. And so there's definitely a lot of youth here on this team and a lot of talent. Moore being a junior, he is track speed no oh, one of the fastest players that we've seen this season tim immediately on that first play when we saw him come off the line of scrimmage just you could tell that he's a, a maybe just a half step quicker than everybody out here finding a way to get that ball to him in space he's already made a few couple a, a few first down catches and then that uh -huh. huge 82 yard touchdown reception from tuck Again, Hawkins just going to blast it into the end zone. Yep. 
the Bass Trop Bears right tackle, the junior Jackson and Taylor. He, he is 6'5", 300. He's as big as Moore is fast. Yes. And you can tell he just out there. He's just a large individual. The Bear offense huddling up. 7-16 again. Now, Tim, now that, you know, what a crucial possession for the Bears here. Oh, sure. Don't want to give it back to the Panthers again, especially with this much time left on the clock. Looking for him again. Has a receiver open. He overthrows him. Intended for Jalen Groton. Groton just again had his man beat who had fallen down. Tuck had all day to throw there as well. Thanks for bearing with us, folks, on this uh, yep. foggy booth it's not even a foggy night it's just a foggy booth here in Bastrop right, it's just a booth <laughs> it's not, it's, there's no fog outside the game is unencumbered by fog and off to Marino left hand side brings up third down and long third down and seven you'll have to rely on the smooth tones of Tim Dean to talk us through this one we have to not Kind of, kind of make it out to. You can't make any numbers. It's just white and and maroon blobs playing on the screen. Oh yeah, you're losing the detail. So. Oh no detail at all. We've lost all yeah, I'm detail. I'm gonna have to kick in my play-by-play. -play. You might have to kick it in. We need the squeegee, squeegee stat. All right, it is third and seven. Receivers both sides of the field. Snaps back, drops it, picks it back up. Flushed out of the pocket, throws it downfield, overthrows his receiver, is going to bring up fourth down, going to force the punting unit back onto the field. Coach has to punt away, cannot. Pass incomplete for Zach Wilkinson. So if you're just tuning in, Liberty Hill is the team in white. Uh, we have uh, glass fogging up here in the booth, and that's one of the reasons you're not able to to see it is not Jack Spina that's causing that our cameraman if you need a good cameraman call Jack Spina that is 1-800 Jack Spina I wish he had 1-800 Jack Spina <laughs> Liberty Hill offense coming onto the field I think it's driving Jack crazy now with the little fog so. nothing you can do about it Jack powering through the squeegee was temporary. I think the squeegee would have to just just keep going up and down the whole entire time. Sure, just back and forth. I, I'd, I'd throw in a few bucks to keep him doing that. I need some rain next. And off to Ben Carter up the middle. He breaks loose it for more yards. Picks up 13 or 14 yards on first down. Doing it Ben Carter style. Yards after contact. Yak. 90% of his yards are Yak. Ben Yak Carter. I mean, uh, how 90%? Well, the only reason it's not probably that. Well, yeah, no, you're right. It is. Even if he breaks a 60 or 70 yarder, yes. he got hit a few times yes. before he did. Inside handoff. There that goes is Noah. Noah Long, and he gets a block, and he's going to score. He got the block from Ben Carter down the field. And once again, 40. One yard touchdown run for Noah Long. His second of the ball game. Good to have Noah Long back. Tim, back to back 41 yard touchdown runs from Noah Long. His last one was from 41 yards up. That's not a repeat. 41 for 21. Two touchdowns. Delay a game on defense. Interesting. 
All right, here we go. Extra point. Liberty Hill goes in this weird formation. We've not seen them use this to start off, and then they switch. Coach Les said we need some kind of squeegee signal that we can shut, like a bat signal. Oh, yeah. That we can like shine for the squeegee man. <laughs> Kick is up. And it is good. Greg, is that, can we, did we just invent a new superhero? Squeegee man. Squeegee man. That'll be 32. 32 to 10 now with five and a half minutes left to go until halftime. Greg, update that scoreboard. 32-10. Right on the money. You got it already? Not bad. Coach Les Clary making sure that I get the scores right and oh, we're up to on. date. He's Quarters on. are right. Everything is good. We have done lots of work with Mr. Clary. That's right. That's right. Coach keeps us in line. So... Where is Mr. Clary? Where does his where does he reside? Coach, where is where you uh, where is the main where is, where you are tonight? What studio are we in? The listeners want to know. They want to know where Coach Les is. Yeah, Coach Les Clary. And was he a coach? Yes. Yeah, of course. He told me, yes. You can't say you can't call somebody a coach unless they were a coach. I got kids that still call me coach. Me too. That's what. Ha that's how it is when you're a coach, right? You get coached for the rest yeah, of your you life. You coached volleyball, didn't you? Coach a bunch of stuff. Baseball, basketball, poker, poker. He's an Astros. Coach Les is an Astros fan too. Oh, me too. Yeah. I, I, Coach Les, I was at the game Sunday night. I splurged and bought me some great tickets. They're offsides again. I don't know why they keep doing this. You know, oh, why did we do that? Just to practice it? But we were way off sides. Not sure. Maybe they just did it to practice. Didn't work too well. We were way off sides. But Greg, I, yeah, so Coach Les, I was at the game hoping that I could witness a, a, a American League championship and our pitching just completely fell apart. We didn't hit the ball. Beaumont, Texas, Coach Les Clary. Ah, is he from Beaumont? That I'm not sure of. Yeah, there's some old schools in Beaumont that don't exist anymore that are very historic. Beaumont A Bear was a school back in the day. Um, I don't think Westbrook exists anymore, which was a combination of a bear and, a, and another school. Good play there by Tuck out to Pauly. Yep, first down. You know, it's funny because I'm sitting here, I'm sitting next to the coaching staff and I want to tell, I want to say, wow, those plays are successful and really were in the first quarter. They've gone away from them. I don't want him to dial him back up. <laughs> it's, a, it's weird being next to him. Well, it's weird, you know, when we see so much in early in games over the years that it oh, works. And we could write a book. We could uh, we yeah. could honestly write a book on it. And that would be the book. It, it You could. You could put it in that book, Samuel Knox. Vallejo in on the tackle as well. I always wonder if an opponent of Liberty Hill would ever hire us to, like, tell them what plays yeah, are fixed in a row. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> you're ready to turn to – No, I would You're never ready to do turn that. court? Like, oh, my goodness. do that, but we could. I mean, no, we, we know this team well enough that we know what they're – Typically fixing to run, what you know. We'll take fixing. it to our grave. Yes, we will. It's it's. We will not publish the book. Quarterback got hit. Rotten. And it's complete for a touchdown. That's Bastrop, a great, great that's throw. That's a great. That's a great, great throw. throw by Tuck. That's a great throw and catch in his, by Groton. Man, and the defense was in his face too, Greg. Uh, I mean, stepped up into pressure, delivered it on the money. Uh, great defense, too. Can't ask for too much more uh, playing defense there. Mm -hmm. But uh, a, a, a better pass. 
You can't you can't cover them completely, Tim. No matter how good that coverage is, a better pass and catch is going to win every time. Balls out, balls out, fire, fire. That. Oh, he throws it up in the air, and he has a receiver, and they convert it. Wow. He did you hear the announcer in the stadium? He said, "I don't know how that happened." <laughs> Neither do we. That was the craziest two-point conversion of the season. <laughs> As the ball went back. Wow. To the 30-yard line. And kicker Isaac Duggar launched it into the crowd. Wow. wow. <laughs> 3.58 left on the clock, though. It's Tons of time. 32 to 18, Greg. We have 50 points scored in the first quarter, the first half, so far. Ladies and gentlemen, if you look at the board, you'll see it's only four more days of Halloween. Make sure you have a safe 31st. Greg, it is Halloween. Do you do you do you do stuff for Halloween at your house? Absolutely. I still have a ten year old daughter. She is dressed up as Beetlejuice this year. So what? Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Was that her decision? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Really? And Isaac with a sixty yard yep. kick Well, I think the fans are celebrating that they did an onside kick. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wow. little. Wow! I know they are. They're up, standing up, clapping. That they did an onside kick. It was sort of a. And they kick it out of the end zone, and so Liberty Hill starts off at the twenty-five. Do you dress up, Greg? Do you? I do. Yeah, we go. We go trick or treating. What are you dressing up as? The Grim Raker. I carry a rake with me, oh Tim, and I gosh. make it's not the Grim Reaper; it's the Grim Raker. Seaborn. Flags. Oh, flags way. everywhere. Yes, back. The Grim right. And what's Mama dressing as? Well, I don't know what she's going as this year. I think she might go as as another Beetlejuice character. Is I she think. listening? Not tonight. They're actually at the at a, a Halloween fair. Oh. On the offense. Halloween Fair. Joslin Elementary. Spooktacular. Which I'm sure many schools do. A hold or an illegal block. Oh, that's a big one. It is a big one. That'll be a 10-yard penalty against the offense. So, Greg, um, are you happy that you're at the game over the spooktacular? You know, obviously I like to be with the family at the yeah. Spooktacular, but Tim, you know I love these Panthers. And Friday nights, that's what we do. My kids are now used to it. They are, they understand dad's calling a game on Friday nights. Third and... Oh, there's flag down. Mm. They get a timeout before? I don't see anybody. First down and long. Oh, wow. Delay a game. Anymore. That's not good. A injury timeout. They were playing down all the field. Is bringing off one of the Bears. Another, another big piece. Sophomore. Kenyon Moore getting helped off the field. Another large body for this Bastrop Bear team. Moore is a sophomore this year for the Bastrop Bears. Now, Kenyon Moore and Keyshawn Moore, I see that they're both Moores, and we have made the mistake in the past thinking they're brothers. It's possible. Pitchford trying to get to the outside himself. He sets up block. a block. He got it. Still going. He is going to get a lot of it wow, back. Wow, what a back run by 30. Jack. Jack Pitchford able to get back across the scrimmage line. Great job setting up the block, too, as he busted out the left side. Patience of Jack Pitchford. 
Tim, we've moved on from the squeegee now, and we have what appears to be a mop. So the mop is going to give us a, a good, clear view here. I don't know about clear, but it's... Well, it's, it's clearer help. than it was, folks, so you're going to get a little bit of... Fumble. Like Liberty. They lose it. The, the coaching staff wants to say they got it. They do not. The whole entire crowd wants to say they got it. They didn't. Folks, you get a little bit of clarity there. Brings up third, third. and short on the running clock. Third and one. Ben Carter and... Oh, oh they... False start. They're going to lose five and lose the first and down. I'd like to see him run a 228, 229. Just talking pregame with legend from Liberty Hill, Brent Bodie. He's on, on the monolith. He is. Coach Brent Bodie. The first state championship that Liberty Hill won. He was the tailback, the gaining way over 2,000 yards and amazing great speed and we were just talking about the 228 229s that they used to use as a almost a bread and butter pitching way to the outside really fast hand off to Noah Long left hand side Got him. And he's off to the Got him. don't walk in the back Noah makes a man miss Another one, what? unbelievable run by Noah Long. If he's in the end zone, great job, Enzi Outsie, as he gets to about the 20, 25, setting up his blockers. Wow. My goodness. Welcome back. 71 Noah yards for Noah Long. Big run there by Long, his third of the night. Welcome back. Noah Long. One thirty-seven left to go. Until halftime, they're still scoring. It was first and 25. Wow. First and 30 on that one. Jack Pitchford, huge play by Pitchford. It's 39 to 18 with 137 left to go until halftime. It just does not feel like a 39 to 18 ball game. It really doesn't. This those onside kicks are brutal for the for the Bears. Brutal. One return for a touchdown, the other one a short field touchdown. And that really, those 14 points, how big are they right now? Unbelievable. No, I just... Really could just be a one score, maybe two score game. Greg, you know what I, You know what a big part of this, I, again, I, if, if, they, if they hear me, they hear me, is the two onside kicks that Bastrop attempted. I know it's a gamble, but they gave Liberty Hill... A touchdown on one of them and great field position in the very first quarter on their first possession you know and it's it, they're all gambles when you do it and I I, I you know you, you just, they are you just can't give Liberty Hill a gift and you, you're, you're risking giving them a gift when you, when you do those things right and it's and that could be the difference in this game right now Another kick out of the uh, end zone. zone. Who's first down there? For Hawkins. Number five. Be a the ball be out of the 25 Let's call him out. John Luke Rodriguez. Let's do it. Senior. John Luke Rodriguez, first one down to the end zone. We love to see it. Love that. We're gonna call it out. We're gonna let you we're gonna let you know about it. Oh, yes. Get your name called.
Nederland, Texas, Coach Les Clary. Ah. From Nederland. Tim, you know where Nederland is? I do know where Nederland is. I know you know. You're going to say it's in Texas. It's in Texas. Burner. Oh, wow. And it's a tackle. Wow. He is, another. He is so fast. And I have a feeling the entire coaching staff next to us try to find a way to get it into four's hands. Oh, yes. How do you, how do you get four the ball? Timmy said, tonight, Nederland is playing the 100th meeting against Port Neches. Port Natchez. I said Natchez. No, Port Natchez Groves, nicknamed the Mid-County Madness. Wow. And is the Bum Phillips Bowl. Back in the late 59s, Bum coached at both schools before going pro. Wow. <laughs> And, and Les Clary also said that Squeegee Man has a sidekick already, the Mop Man. Squeegee Man <laughs> and Mop Man. Uh, so, do you know that Nederland, what their nickname is? The ne- I'm going to guess, I'm going to say the Nederland Eagles. Nope, the Bulldogs. The Bulldogs. Yep. And they're the same colors as my old high school, black and gold. Black and gold. Yep. Love it. Yellow or gold? It, it's a gold. It's, it's a yellow. yellow. It's yellow. No, it's not. It's, it's yellow. Les, tell him it's not yellow, that it's gold. Tell him. It's not gold. The majority of guys that tell me that their colors are gold, it's not gold. It's yellow. They just don't like to say yellow. Yeah. Like the Packers. Green and gold. Nah, it's yellow. Yeah. Steelers, same thing. Black and gold. No, it's not Steelers. It's yellow. So Bum Phillips did go to school there. That's why he, when he brings up the Bum Phillips thing, he's he's right. Bum Phillips went to, went to Nederland. Coach knew it was the Bulldogs. Of course he did. Get oh, out of the, hands. the wetness. Pass incomplete to Zach Wilkinson. Ball on the money there from Tuck. Wilkinson dropped it. And you have to figure the mop man needed to get on the ball for that one for him to catch it. A little slick. Second down. Looks like it's not fogging up this fast now, Greg. I think they maybe they turned off the AC to keep it from. Oh, he moved. Right tackle. Ooh, that's the. Or maybe it was the right guard. Jackson Taylor, if that was him. I don't. Right? It was the right guard. Uh, Jackson Taylor, by the way, has already had one letter uh, or one offer letter from Arkansas Pine Bluff, and he's a junior. He should probably get some. He's going to get. Schools. He's, he's going to get plenty of offers. Greg, I see another stat that shows him at 6'7, not 6'5. Another. Recruiting service. Flushed out of the pocket again. Throws it across and incomplete pass. That was great and unable to hang on to it. Same play. They send Moore out, clearing out the safeties, and then they run Groton underneath. Tuck's been able to find him several times right there, just through the hands of Groton. Mm -hmm. It's a good solid play as as Tuck gets rolled out as the pressure third comes. Down on the 25 yard line, third down, both third down. Another I know he's the third string quarterback, but he's a good one. Oh, he absolutely. What what do the other two look like? Well, the the first one was a freshman. No, I'm saying the first team and the second team quarterback. I know a, one of them was a freshman. Oh, oh, wow. Yes. Flushed out of the pocket again. Going to tuck it and run. Has running room. Trying to get the first down. And he's going to get it. Gets across the 10 to the 9-yard line. Just enough to pick up the first down. Good job by Tuck to Tuck and run it. He doesn't know what play to call here. And he just throws it into the dirt with just to stop the clock. Two seconds left to go. Bears have two timeouts. That's an interesting choice there. Yeah, they had a chance to probably run a play, right? With two timeouts. Hmm. 
But you just don't want to give the Panthers back the ball with any time at all. I mean, you're going to take a touchdown whenever you can get it. You can't really help that. But Coach talking to his young quarterback, as Tim pointed out. We don't see that a lot. Quarterbacks being the ones that that run the that shuttle the plays in and out. But I think Tim hit it right on the money, just trying to make his quarterback feel secure. Dancing around under pressure, throws it back across the grain and almost intercepted. It's an incomplete pass. Look like he, Greg, he didn't even look that way. He just sort of turned and threw it up in the air. A young quarterback will find that you don't throw against the grain that way, that it is just putting the ball up for grabs. And the Panther defense absolutely swarming to that ball as Tuck wasn't able to put any mustard on it. Third down. Got going on here. The referees blew the whistle to... I don't know if they're talking about something. They're coming all together for a powwow, Greg. Isaac Duggar over here kicking into the net. Like to see kickers kicking into the net, Tim, when they might, you know, come up for a field goal. So good job here for Duggar. He's already made a field goal tonight and a two-point conversion. Tim, he's got one point for an extra point, two points for the conversion, three points for a field goal, one point, two point, three point. Might be the only player in the state tonight that can do that. That's got to be a rarity. One, two, and three. Wow. If he had two safeties, he could get four. That'd be tough. Third down from the 10, just inside the 10. Throws it up in the air to the back of the end zone, and it is caught for a touchdown to Keyshawn Moore. Who else? <laughs> more across the whole field where his speed is a factor ten yard touchdown pass tuck to more and the book says go for two well they are going for two Keep an eye on four and five. The other two receivers don't get much attention. Under pressure. Caught from behind. I don't know if it's loose, but it's a no good. So that did not work. 39-24 with 38 seconds left to go until halftime. Stay tuned. We're going to keep the camera on the field for halftime shows. The bands are going to perform, and what I'm understanding, Liberty Hills Band is leaving after the halftime performance. They have a big competition tomorrow uh, that they've got to get back to. So they're going to pack up the buses and head back to, to the hill. So, you know, they can uh, perform tomorrow, Greg. Get ready to go. Get yes. ready to go. Coach Les did say it is black and gold. He said yellow is for Packers fans. Oh. And, he, and he also said that we should drop our middle linebacker uh, uh, back a little bit to take that slant away and maybe use him as a spy. Wow. Coach Les. He's scouting the game. He's he's given us uh, some, some, some golden nuggets of uh, – of coaching knowledge here, which I think both of those things are absolutely on point, Coach. Drop that middle linebacker back. Take that slant away. All, they, they're not running the ball. They don't even need to have that backer there to, to worry about that run. Bring them back and then have them spy tuck. Kick is out of the end zone. And Liberty Hill, 38 seconds, Greg. I think they're just going to take a knee, go to the end. No, they're not, they're not going to force something here. Maybe. No, maybe, no, maybe a run. Let's see. Three timeouts. They, 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 if they do anything, it's going to be Carter up the middle to see if he can get to the second line. I'm not going to argue with the voice of the Panthers. If they do, on this one. No. If they're either going to just run the clock out with a basic running play that's not really. But I'd like to see him run a play. Well, Ben Carter would be the, the best bet right up. Nope. They're actually going to give it to Noah. 
and he gets five. And now, you know, they're not going to call a timeout here because I think if they had gotten some yardage there, uh, some significant yardage, they might have run a play to try to get into field goal range. But now the clock's still running. You could tell now that this is they're just going to run the clock out. Fulford wants it. Fulford comes in. The pass play could be on. Greg, I this, this, you, you're, it could be, but it's just too much of a gamble here to – Inside handoff to Noah. There goes Ball. Noah. Oh, there goes Noah. He's down the side there goes Noah. The race he's gone. He is gone. Touchdown of 72 yards. Jesus. Wow, is he fast. Great job by Noah Long there off the right side. And the coaching staff next to us are upset, obviously. Left enough time on the clock for these Panthers to score. 71 yards. Tim. What? I'm going to check the book. The stats here. And this is crazy. Are you ready for this? Noah Long has four touchdowns tonight. Okay. Two from 41, two from 71. What? Uh, let me say it again. He's got two touchdowns from 41 and two touchdowns from 71, which is crazy well, that they're the exact same numbers from both sides. Noah scored that with no time left on the clock. The extra point was good he walked Hawkins. it off he walked it off the first yep. half 46 to 24 as the teams head into halftime wow wow what a, right. what a first half of football here comes the squeegee man is it mop or squeegee no, squeegee man back time. to squeegee they are the dynamic duo the squeegee and squeegee man and mop man it is it is a squeegee with a longer handle it is a long handled squeegee you're about to see it folks it's about to go by the camera greg is this where we come to we're getting I excited about a squeegee i don't know why i don't, this is some bad squeegee too as well oh he must have been talking to somebody there <laughs> Had somebody move. Oh, he's streaking our. our, our. <laughs> no, another, he's not. Hold on, sorry. Another streaker. Is another not streaker. Streaking. I'm sorry. <laughs> but Greg, you talk about. He really did leave our sort of uh, streaky. Um, what he, folks, we've been passed over <laughs> by the squeegee. Man. I can't believe that we got didn't get full squeegee. We got half squeegee, and now here we are. At least. Camera is on the field for the Liberty Hill band, and we're going to turn that up and right. uh, let it go. Well, we're going to take a break. We'll be back and we'll start the second half. Liberty Hill lead 46 to 24, and uh, we'll be right back. You've been listening to Liberty Hill football on Vike Media. We'll see you here to start the second half. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the field the award-winning Liberty Bells. The bells are directed by Ken Priore. This year's officers are Captain Melina Flores, co-captain Avery Gunther, and junior lieutenants Natalie Clay and Carly Hudnall. Bell social officers are Frankie Muscat, Olivia Federley, and President Brooklyn Harris. This year's JVCs are Addison Hilbert and Ella Turner.
time, please welcome to the field the Sweethearts of Bastrop High School, the 2023-2024 Bastrop Honey Bears, featuring their brand new uniform. Honey Bears are led by officers, 2nd Lieutenant Jennifer Puente, 2nd Lieutenant Abby Wong, 1st Lieutenant Jocelyn Gallant, and Captain Bella Simpson. Social officers are Destiny Salazar, Melanie Arce, Amber Torres, and Trinity Wilson. Honey Bears are under the direction of Ms. Kara Pasquale and Ms. Tessa Altmiller. Honey Bear of the Week is Bella Simpson. Spirit Girl of the Week is Dezaini Ramirez Gaitan. The Above and Beyond Girl is Addison Zanadetti. The Teacher of the Week is Mr. Evan Carley. And the Administrator of the Week is Mrs. Kelly. And now please enjoy the Honey Bears as they perform their exciting jazz routine to shut up and dance with me. like to thank all our silver, gold, platinum, and diamond sponsors, Alliance Safety and Fire Protection, Leanne Salon and Boutique, Myers Welding Services, Al's Painting, Pitbull Academy of Dance, Mastrop Bookkeeping, Simpson Septic, Dale Cook Backhoe, Vernon Tuck Septic, Aerobic Services, Sensors Diesel Services, Classic Bank, Lodens Air Conditioning and Heating, and Vic McTyver Homes. Thank you for all your support, as well as the VHS administration and Honey Bears Booster Club. And we'd like to give a huge shout out to the Liberty Bells dance team. Have an amazing season. We'd also like to everyone to wish the Bastrop Bear Band good luck as they compete in area competition tomorrow on their way to state. Go band!
Getting ready to start the second half of play. Liberty Hill leads this game 46 to 24, 24. Lots of scoring here in this first half as we have seen quite a few of those games this year. Greg, we're here in Bastrop. This is a really nice stadium. We talked about it, but the hospitality here has also been fantastic. Absolutely. We were just talking to the 
you know, I, I guess they're the, the hosts. They're, they're, they run the, the stadium. They had some, uh, some Alfredo for us, a nice salad, some, you know, they, they, they do it up. We had discussed it before, Tim, pre-COVID. Uh, meals were kind of I'm not going to say expected but that's really what yep. stadiums did and and, and they, they really hooked us up they take care of the coaches they take care of the visiting um, radio and radio co uh, the visiting coaches the radio crews all yep. the people that come that are part of this game that food is a big part of the deal and, and uh, unfortunately since COVID that's kind of faded away so good to see the nice people out here in Bastrop hooking us up with a halftime meal doing a great job doing a great job absolutely and so uh you know, Liberty Hill's going to get the ball here in the second half. Uh, Greg, you might want to spin that camera a little bit. Jack is taking a break. Here's where we can put it on the... I know his parents are listening, and so Jack is not up here. Just letting you know, that's Greg working the camera. Put it on the 50-yard line right there. Put Jack, it on that 50-yard Jack's line. Jack's got a lot of stuff going on. He tells me he's real busy. He's got stuff going on tomorrow. Not really sure what all Jack's doing tomorrow, but he's, he's, got a, he's a busy man. I want to give a big shout out. You know, uh, Aunt Ginger said her about being nice to her, Greg, and not like telling her that I, that she's cheating on the Panther. Said never, <laughs> absolutely never. <laughs> and you know, we got two more really new great fans this year in in the Spina family. That Jack's mom and dad listened to us and uh, already made some comments about. How much fun they're having listening to us tonight, Greg. Yeah, you're a regular comedian, and, and you know, every now and then you get some new fans, right? You get right. some new fans. <laughs> they love the voice of the Panthers. Tim Dean keeps everybody on their toes. Believe me, I know it well. We've been, we've been doing this a long, long time. 2005, 2006? You know, we started before we started. I mean, we, we both started working doing this before the Liberty Hill days, right? I We did. I, we got recruited to Liberty Hill. I, I started earlier than that. I was employee number one with the previous company, uh, you know. That shall not be named. Yes. Pre yes. This shall not be named, and I was employee number one, and I don't even know if you call it an employee because I didn't, didn't get paid. Then uh, it's not an employee. Yeah, but, yeah, okay, volunteer number one. There you go. And so uh, back in years and years ago, even early 2000s, I want to say it's even close to about year 2000, I started doing games uh, at Leander High School years and years ago, and that's where you and I first met, right? It was a Leander game? That's right, that's yep. right. I, and believe it or not, I was did not talk at all. No. I was just the producer. Right. I and was, you didn't I, want to talk. I did not. I was not. Didn't have my feet underneath me. Was not. Didn't feel comfortable. I'd never, never done it. It's, you know, you're you're out here trying to figure it out. It's, and I still don't know what I'm doing. But I, I they, at least they give me this mic every week. And Greg, we either one time. of us do. You know, Greg, <laughs> listen, <laughs> a couple of knuckleheads. No, we are. It's, <laughs> listen, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll tell little stories now. You know, listen, you and I do not profess to be experts on this nor we don't we don't claim to be uh the talent level of you know even college levels that were our talent levels nowhere near what those guys do and nor do we ever claim to be want to be whatever we are who we are right we are who we are and over the years we have had so many great followers and great fans of our broadcast saying how much they love to listen to us how entertaining we are and uh i have taken great pride in that do i believe there's people out there that think we're a couple of clowns right of course probably there are some no people. doubt yes. no doubt especially on opposing teams no yes. doubt they, they think we're us. clowns oh, yeah, yeah. oh my yeah, goodness yeah. there i will also say this it helps when you have one of the best rushing teams in the history of high school football right. to call. Like yes. we, we really get to uh, sidecar what, what is an unbelievable program. Yes. Um, you know, the Booster Club. We, we thank the Liberty Hill Booster Club for giving us the opportunity. But really, the coaching staff and, the, and you know, going back to Coach Vance and Coach Walker yep. uh, and, and just the, the uh, system and, and the program that they've developed oh, in yeah. Liberty Hill, you know, we are – benefactors of that and, and gives us affords us the opportunity to come on and just have a good time talking football 
Oh, we do. We, we, we go all over the place. And Greg, I, you know, I'll, I'll mention a couple of, of things. We've, we've done some crazy games. And I really want, you know, the, the I know the Spinos are listening. And, and, and some stuff about things that we've done, we've seen. We've called out, had to been outside for games in, in weather. We've had equipment failures where we didn't even get the game out at all, where we just sat in the bleachers. Um, we've called in sweat boxes of, of press boxes uh, in, in places in all over Central Texas, in places that uh, now, you know, they're literally small. There, there's schools. people listening right now that have listened to a game, and I've had to can the crowd on my iPhone yeah. because we didn't have the crowd mic. Right. And so we had to make a fake crowd. Right. We've done all kinds of things. Like back in the day when you had to make a fake hitting a, like a, hitting a bat or something, right, for a hit <laughs> like, oh, yeah. in the old games. Yeah. <laughs> Liberty Hill going to receive the kickoff. And he better. Win. Oh no! It's going to be out at the one. And Noah Long bounced out of his hands and rolls out of bounds at the one, which means that's where Liberty Hill will get the 99 yards. Greg, here's a couple other things people I, don't know. We're, I think Noah. I think they're going to give that ball to Noah Long for sure right now. Co Coach yeah, said, "You're going to you're going to drop it back there. You're getting the ball. We're going to do see if you can take it 99." Tony Dorsett, Monday Night Football, right here. I mean, you heard it, folks. Ben Carter also a possibility. No, that's true. I think it is going to be Ben Carter. You got to get a little breathing room. But if I was the defensive guys here, and maybe they can hear me next door, Ben Carter is getting this ball. Tim, what? Tim, what? Tim, you're on record. What? You're on record calling it. What? Wow. 99 yard run for Ben Carter. Wow. I called it. Wow. Wow. And that is a touchdown for the Panthers, ladies and gentlemen. Folks, we <laughs> folks folks, we are we are literally right next to the Bass Drop coaching I and, can't and, hear and, and I got we, my headphones. We honestly just out of respect. We'd be going bonkers if this was at a home game because Ben Carter just Didn't went 99 that. yards. He got for the score, and it's 99 yak yards because he right, might he have been hit hitting in the, the end scrimmage. zone. Yes. Wow, Ben Carter. Unbelievable run to put these Panthers. Wow. Uh, 53 to 20. Check the tape, folks. Check the tape. Because I said it was going to be Noah for 99, and I got corrected. I got corrected. And and Tim said it was going to be – he said Tony Dorsett. I'm, it's true. I'm not, I'm, it's not, true. I'm not a huge fan of that side of it. But, but you know it, the it is play exactly, I'm talking about, right? Absolutely. It's 99 – it was 99 yards, right? Like it, it, it was inside the it was inside the tackles too, just like Tony Dorsett. It was inside the tackles, inside right. the tackles. Carter, 99 yards. You can read about hey. it in the Liberty Hill Independent. Absolutely, coming up. Absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> like Tony Dorsett on Monday Night Football. Wow. Yep. What a way to start the second half. So, Tim, what? the last two plays for the Panthers, Yep. 99-yard touchdown run Carter, 71-yard touchdown run Noah Long. Back-to-back -back plays, maybe the two. Uh, of all time. I mean. Could be the, the two longest back-to-back -back plays of all time. Wow. Runs. The last play of the first half and the first play of the second half were touchdown runs. And Noah's, Noah's play before that was also a 71-yard touchdown run. So the last three, the last three touchdowns, the last three touchdowns for the Panthers, 71 yards, 71 yards, 99 yards. He's got to bring it out. Oh. And it looked like he got tripped there on the two. Well, they got a long way to go too, but they're going to be putting it up in the air, I think. Holy cow, folks. What an absolute. What a play. 
And the fact that you called it is even cooler. <laughs> That's fun, Greg. Fun times. Fun times. Well, I tell you what. Moore and Tuck are not done yet. No, no, no. I yeah. have a feeling Moore's going to get loose no, he's many more times before the night's over. And it could be Gratton as well. So trying to get a little breathing room right there. But, yes, I, I don't think they're done scoring. I, no. I, I, no, absolutely not. You, you, with the way that Tuck is throwing and the way that Moore is running here, you find a way to, to get him the ball again. They've been running that clear out and getting Groton underneath. If, as long as Tuck has a little bit of time, that play has been open. Putting it up in the air for the speedster. Has to come back for it. Does it has throws it behind him. He did. He underthrew Moore, who had his man beat. Sebastian Evans. And when I say he had him beat, Evans was with him. Oh, he was. But if you throw it up further, Greg, you know this because you're, you know, you were a, a, you know, a wide receiver. You got to throw it up and let your receiver go get it. Yep. Right? Yep. Out in front. Out in front. But it's still it threw it a long way, right? Tim, I was open. I was open every play. I Never you, covered. Bet you let your quarterback know that. Tim. Every play. Third and nine. Looking again. Under pressure. Under pressure. Throws it up in the air. Incomplete pass. Brings up fourth down. Hold for the Liberty Hill Panther defense. Wow. And this is a tough situation here. You're gonna put the you're gonna put the bass drop punter on the end line. Or he's probably going to be right in the middle of the end zone, actually. Camarina. Right there. Just with a little shoulder drop. He thought he was going to get back to return this one. But here comes 21 onto the field. He is standing really Noah close. Long. To the, standing close to the back of the end zone for sure. He is right on the edge. Huge snap here. Good catch. It's Off. Noah's going to get a chance to return this one. Hang on oh, to the ball. Noah. He hung on to the ball. He didn't get the block he needed right there. He didn't. He made a great tackle in open space. Great tackle in open space. You just heard the announcer say it. Val Regalado. Good starting field position for the Panthers. So, the last play from scrimmage, 99. The play before that, 71. The Panthers, Noah's, uh, uh, 38 yards out. Ben's not getting the ball on this one. I think that we go to the halfback. Nope. He, Carter got it again, didn't it he? It did, and it, again, he get the, the Carter 8-9. First down run. Yeah. Which is just absolutely punishing. I'd and like to see Machaw and Seaborn get some carries, Greg, to I, diversify this up. You know? I see Machaw in there right now, Tim, and I think you could be getting one of those Machaw carries right now off that left side. Oh, pass play. Up in the air. It's caught, Greg. And it's a touchdown pass for the Panthers. To Noah Long, his fifth touchdown of the night. From Jack Pitchford. They caught the Bears up on the line. Everybody was thinking run, including us. Great play there by Jack to Noah. Flags down, it's offsides on defense, so this one will be declined. Hawkins with another extra point. So it is 60 to 24, Panthers. Greg, I know it's the third quarter. You know, 
Are you gonna, are you obviously. Gonna be, are you going to be texting me all next week, next Friday night? Absolutely. Just support? like you do. Absolutely. I do. I text you. Absolutely. It, it does not feel like a 60 to 24 no, ball game. It does not. It's not even. It, it, it feels it, so much closer. And the, the difference is Bastrop just cannot stop Liberty Hill. And their defense is just not able to stop. No, it, it is it is the a Liberty Hill offense that is firing on all cylinders. This Bastrop team is this is a very talented team. They have they have a huge offense and defensive line, massive, just dwarfs Liberty Hill's offensive defensive line. Their speed, they they. They have probably two of the fastest kids on the field playing wide receiver. Very, very talented. Tuck as well. Yes. Throws a good ball. Kick is away. Going to be out of the back of the end zone. The Bears. The Greg, we were talking a little bit about stuff that we've seen, you know, over the years. And what a lot of people don't realize, stuff that, all that crazy stuff that we've seen, we've seen crazier stuff. I called a game where there was a streaker on the field. <laughs> you did. <laughs> no, I, at home at Liberty Hill, a streaker ran across the field during the football game. We also had a black cat, Greg. You did that one with me. We I did. You called that touchdown, the black cat that touchdown. That ran across zone. the field and into the end zone, and I called that. That's a great call. <laughs> it was a great call. Hand off, nothing doing there. Loss of a yard on the play. Ball came loose. but Oh, it is a fumble. It, it is a fumble. Out. They hit him and popped out. And it, I'm in a fog up here on the height that I met up in the mezzanine. I think it level. was Morris in on the tackle. And Liberty Hill has the ball back. I'm I'm looking for the trash can, Jack. I'm looking for the trash can. I don't think they're. You get, Did it travel it? Did it? Does it travel? We've seen it travel before. We saw it. In, ball on the Bears. We have. I can't. Matter of fact, it has its own seat on the bus, Greg. The trash can has a seat on the bus. Liberty Hill, up to the line of scrimmage. Ooh, that was an odd. Like he stutter oh, step, stutter step before he, it went out. It was that one was weird. It, and they fumble the ball, and just like that, they give it back to the Bears. Well, Greg, there was a mix up there somehow because it looked like he opened up left side to hand it off and missed the handoff. It does. And then he tried to hand off to somebody else who I don't even know was expecting the ball, which might have caused that. To spit out. Just a couple of uh, just reset and uh, wipe those two plays out. It was a turnover, turnover, back to back turnovers. As Bastrops puts them out again. I'm throwing downfield. Oh, almost had it one-handed. Tim, not sure if you've noticed, but me and Spina have a nice little clear area yeah, yeah, right yeah. here in not. front of us. I do not. Whereas the coaching staff for the Bears, the other people, look all up and down. Everybody is fogged but you except Spina. for me and Spina. I love it. I'm fogged up here where I'm up in the mezzanine. I love well, it. You know, I say mezzanine. I'm actually only calling from the upper deck of our booth. And... The part where I'm looking at, I've got foggy. Second down. Heavy pressure gets hit. And he overthrew him that time. Well, he had to just he just chunked it up. Greg. He did. There was pressure. There was pressure coming, so he had to get rid of it. But he hasn't really been able to overthrow him. He definitely hasn't been able to overthrow more. But he finally got that one out in front and just had that with the pressure that, that the Panthers 60 to 24 brought. It is uh, third down. Oh, they got to get them in bunches. They're running out of time here. They got 
if I seconds on if I say I'm surprised that I don't see more catching a lot of these vertical pass or horizontal passes on the line of scrimmage. Uh, they, yeah, I agree with you. The short passes would be just as effective, you know, and let your athletes get those extra yards. And they again, they just we've seen that work so well against Liberty Hill. The short passes. We saw it work so well in this game in the first half. Yeah. And we talked about being able to write a book. That's true. Where coaches succeed and they outcoach themselves in the second half or, or throughout the game. And we don't, we don't, as, as Tim mentioned before, we don't profess to no, no. know it all, but we, we, we get to see it and, and, and watch it. Um, unfold where coaches get away from what's working 50 yard there's like a 54 yard punt after the roll really good punt and liberty hill is going to come out after the double fumbles and start this drive deep in their own territory boss on the 17 Sorry if you're listening to some fans in the stadium. Our crowd mic is not too far from them. That's why you can hear the kids talking. Sorry about that. The bands aren't here to sort of help flush some of that out, Greg. So. The bands are going. Well, the band is the bass trap bands on the other end of the stadium. You can kind of hear them faintly. Oh yeah. That'll be no gain. Second down and ten to go for the band. Second and 10, ball left hand hash. Eight and a half left to go in the third quarter of play. Flags down, there's a 228 pitch to Noah Long. He picks up a couple, but I think Offsides? Not sure. No, I think it's gonna be, I think it, no, I don't think so. I think it may be going against Liberty Hill, but Liberty Hill is up 60 to 24. You can see that in the screen if you're, That'd be a short game. you're watching, holding. Yeah, they, they'd have stopped it if it was anything else. Uh, not if it's holding. Oh, well. But they're going to mark it off against. That's the third offside penalty on the Bears. At least three. Two to start the game. Sixty to twenty-four. In the third, Noah Long gets it left hand side and he gets the first down, a pickup of eight. I don't think that was Noah Long. No? Nope. I think that was number 31. Oh, it was. And that is our friend, number 31, Jackson Hines. Nice. Okay, sorry, uh, Jackson. Homecoming King Jackson Hines, I believe. Right. Tim. Don't short the king. No, no. No, or Ben Carter. Hit in the backfield. 28, Ben Carter hit in the backfield again but still manages to clip off a solid run of yep. seven yards, six yards. Well, I think that, uh, I think Noah's night might be done tonight. Hand off to Jackson Hines. He gets the first down, just enough to get it. I think you might be right. The only thing he'd be in here now is for records or to go for His sixth touchdown. He's on, sitting on five right now. Four on the ground and one 30-yard touchdown pass from Pitchford. First down. And off right-hand side. That is Noah Long. He's in the game again. Thought he was done for the night. Guess not. He's going to rip off 12. 
do a long run of the ball. But Jackson Hines in the game too. They're both in there. Yeah. Play coming in from the sideline. Hand off. Ben Carter, left hand side. He stutter steps, picking up more yards. Gets down to around the 20 yard line. First down. Good stutter step, like you said, Tim, right after he broke through that first line of defenders. Bastrop, if they don't get you right at the line of scrimmage, once they get out into that second level, it is really hard for those guys to have to deal with some, because they usually, Liberty Hill's usually going to have a blocker downfield. So not only do you have a thin secondary to try to take care of that ball carrier, but there's also a blocker out in front. Not used to seeing him stutter step. That's a very rare... No, no, you're not. He took a he took a play out of 21's book there. Noah Long definitely likes to jab step, stutter step, hit the spin button. Ben Carter, more of a head down, and uh, plow it forward. But he's got some quicks. Yep. 99 yard touchdown, folks, for Ben Carter. If you're just tuning in late. And off to Carter, and he's going to get in the end zone, I think. Yep. I saw him go up in the air. Carter off the left side. Wow. He's going to plunge it in. For his second touchdown of the half, it has just been all Panthers here in the second. 99-yard Touchdown for Carter, Pitchford to Long for 31, and now 13-yard touchdown run for Ben Extra Carter Extra point again. is good, 67 now to 24. Whoa, Greg, that's a lot of power days is on at Saves Bastro. It is. Save thousands on every new model in stock. Plus, we will help you get ready for the holidays with a $500 shopping spree. Have a train? No problem. It is a lot. Oh, so no, 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 no. Squeegee Man's bad. I had to stop him. Why? Because my spot's good. I got the only good spot in the stadium. Don't squeegee it. For goodness sake. Ben Carter, 13 yard touchdown run. 22 left in the third. We're going to get, well, I think we should get a uh, footnote, an editor's note a in the Liberty Hill uh, Independent. Bylines. Bylines. That's what this is called. I am not sure what fortunate. I, Jack, do you see that we're the only ones that have this? This is pretty cool right now. I love it. Oh, behind on the score. 67. Hang on. Oh, you got in trouble. I didn't. I didn't. I caught myself. Did, let's see if Coach caught me. Hang on. Nope. I made it in. Set the kick off. Coach is asking for the if they got the running clock yet, and I don't think they no. do. Goes for the pooch. Yeah, just. Four twenty left to 420 go. Four twenty left in the third quarter of play. Liberty Hill leads 67-24. Noah Long back after missing a few games. Five touchdowns tonight. Trying to make up for lost time. He is, he is. His goal was like 2,000 yards for the season. He 
behind. Needed some. That might have been one of Bastrop's best runs of the night there. Camarina up from his safety spot to make the tackle. Greg, I'll tell you right now, I, I don't understand at this point with the speed that they have, almost like, why do you even run at all? Right? Yeah, yeah, just to loosen them up to see I, what it, happens. But it been, doesn't do that. No, it doesn't. It doesn't do it. No, they, they had to have watched the same film that we've seen over the course of these years. And you don't loosen up a defense by running. You, that's called tightening them up, right? You loosen up a defense when you want to run, you pass them. That's all they've been doing. I, well, they should throw to five or four every single time. <laughs> I think four's getting it here. He's on an island unto himself. But see, there they go for the long passes. And he caught it on the run. Well, and it's a touchdown! 65 yards. In double coverage, Greg. I think you could triple cover him and we couldn't get it. You put put three guys over there. He is so fast. And Tuck put it right on the money. 65-yard touchdown pass. Tuck to Moore. We said they weren't done. We no, knew no. they weren't done. They just proved it. And it's a track meet. Extra point. We've been in a couple of those this year. 67-31 now. Is the score. And, and I, I don't know much, but I do know this. Uh, they're not going to onside kick. No. I think we're done. I, yeah, I think that. I, I think that. I. I think that ship sailed. With that. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Call Paravec today and ask about our seventy-five dollars air conditioner checkup. Liberty Hills offense have really been clicking tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a sixty-five yard touchdown for the Bears. Top to more. Double coverage. They just put them up there on a. They, Tim, ISO. We called it sure. Red Cup Fly. That's on the right side. We're going to cup the pass protection. Fly. Okay. Easy call. Easy play. Was it you? The, one of my favorite plays was it of you on the fly. Red Cup Fly. Absolutely. That was one of my favorite plays of all Were you time. The fastest I remember. guy on your team. I was one of. Maybe not the fastest, but one of. Who was the fastest? Come on, give him some credit. Oh, well, no, it might have been me. Well, he fair caught it. He did fair catch it. That's... Fair catch called by Noah Long. He must have been told that. Right. He fair caught it at the two-yard line. I just don't know. I've never seen that done in this like this. I don't know. He had to have been told. To. And he did. And he listened. And he's out. Him and Carter both. Yep. Yeah. Reluctantly. You can see the white uniforms yeah. coming out onto the field. Yep. Yeah. You know, but you he, bright white. Fair catching you, you know, comes out to the twenty five anyway, so that's why well, just be safe. Nobody gets hurt. <laughs> ben Carter and Noah Long coming off the field looking dejected. Handed off to Jackson Hines, left hand side, Good three yards. Do you know they both want to be out there just sure. they have, want no Great. part of coming out of I the know. game. I understand, but they have a 36-point lead. That is 36 points. Did you did you get a calculator for that, or did you just you do that right now? Greg, I went to school in Texas. We I, learned I, those things. I was just wondering. I was just asking. That was quick. Oh, oh, oh. Busted oh, Seaborn. He's Seaborn. gone. Gone to the races. Seaborn. 72-yard touchdown run for Seaborn. DJ Seaborn, the heir apparent to Noah Long, shows what we're probably going to see a whole lot of next year, a Seaborn backfield for 72 yards, another huge run for the Panthers who have scored on Four plays of longer than seventy-one yards tonight. Greg, I'm—I can't remember how many yards we that we 
gained against Hutto earlier this year. Uh, but it was over 800. And the kick is good. That is 74 points for the Panthers. But the Panthers have 74 points in the third quarter. Yeah. And there's no they they are showing no signs of letting up. No. Absolutely not. But here's the thing. Bastrop can score immediately if they throw it to Moore again. <laughs> I mean, we, we cannot yeah, be fast. If they just if they just if they just ISO Moore or Groton again, it really could be a track meet. Incredible blocking by the off Tim. Yeah. Let's give it up for the offensive line. Right. Tonight. Let's talk about the holes that these guys have been opening up for these running backs against a five man front. It's just crazy. just a, a a great job all around by the coaching staff and this this offensive line for the Panthers um, to produce 74 points on a night that really Tim you didn't really think it was gonna it was gonna be like this didn't yeah. think it was gonna be this prolific of a night to clear out the bass drop uh, faithful there there might be more people um, from Liberty Hill here at the game right now than yeah. there are Bear fans. Greg, uh, against Hutto, Liberty Hill had 753 yards rushing. Carter had 368, and Noah Long had 311. Noah has more than that tonight. Any, pa any pass yards in that game? Nope, none at all. Remember? They didn't throw a pass. Or if they do one, it was incomplete. Uh, 753 yards rushing on the ground. I wonder where we're at right now, but, you know, again, the starters are out, right? So... I mean, we're, we're not even through the third quarter and have s 74 points. And we scored 82 against Hutto. So 74-31. So Ben Carter started out with a 56-yarder. Noah Long, 41 yards. No along 41 yards. No along 71 yards. No along 71 yards. Ben Carter, 99 yards. Carter, 13 yards. A little 13 yarder. And Seaborn, 72. All right, you got to use your Pennsylvania math. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven touchdowns tonight. Greater. And 40 yards. I thought you were trying to do math to see what just the touchdown yardage was. You sort of disappointed me. I apologize. Great. There's another There's another run for Tim Dean up the middle to loosen him up. No, that's just. It, oh, to tighten him up, sorry. No. Lefty Lucy, righty tighty. Greg, this. They is, ran to the right side, tighten him up. That's the, now that they're, I mean, they're down so much, they're not even. They may throw again, but... It, oh, you see, Groton is out there, so is oh, Moore. I, I, that's true, but when you run on the first two plays, you're really not trying that hard at this point. Because your, your biggest weapon is throwing to four and five. Moore and Grayton. And Moore and Grayton are spread out wide, different sizes. And you see Camarina, Camarina over on Moore. But Groton's got it this time. Incomplete. A little good, good coverage there. Look like the receiver sort of stiff-armed the defender a little bit, trying to create distance. Well, that's totally allowed if you're a receiver. Trayvon Williams on the coverage. Fourth down. Greg, I'm like you. I really like the, you know, one of the things I have we haven't seen, you know, from – uh, uh, from Bastrop is, you know, maybe even wide receiver screens. Get it in the hands of those athletes and let them, you know. We've seen that work really well this year I, against Liberty Hill. I'm going to say I, I, we've only seen them throw short or along the line of scrimmage to Moore maybe a couple of times. And both times it, it worked out to their advantage. 
Um, because he's so fast. He's so elusive. Yeah. And just getting him in space is, oh, a, uh, is, is a weapon. Aiden Camarino on the return. Camarino got to return it. He's excited about it. Here comes DJ Seaborn. Jackson Hines, Seaborn. I'm trying to see who the fullback is. Is it Machal? Uh, he didn't play fullback. Oh, no. I don't see either. Can't tell who's. We haven't seen anybody hardly come in for Carter. He's played every down. That's who got it. It's not. It, yeah, it's, it's not, not Ben Carter, Carter, but that is a fullback it's a, run. It's a single digit. Same five. Is it five? That's John Luke Rodriguez. John Luke Rodriguez. We John called Luke his name Rodriguez. earlier. Ball it up. is John Luke Rodriguez. Of course it is. I just told you that. Oh, you did. That's right. For a big gain, it'll be second and three to go. Pick up of seven. He, Jack Spina, he just doesn't one. listen to me. He knows I'm John right. Luke Rodriguez. Yes. Sound like a country star. Possibly. That is the cool end name. of the third quarter. Liberty Hill leads 74-31 as we head into the fourth quarter. We're going to take a quick break and... Uh, you know, we'll be right back after this. You're listening to Liberty Hill Football and Vite Media. Well, we'll stay here. Thought Greg was going to take it. Greg is, you know, taking a break himself. Tim, we were going to talk about. Uh, were we? The, the, you know, how great these Panthers are doing tonight. <laughs> of course we are. Brought to you by. <laughs> A and M Water Well Service. A and W A and W Water Well Service. service. <laughs> this this between quarters chit chat to brought to you by A and W Water Well Service. And off up the middle. Oh my goodness, Greg S. Rodriguez. John. Thirty five yards. Write it down, Greg. Put it in the book. Touchdown. John Luke Rodriguez for 35 yards. He gets in the action to put the 80 burger on the board. Greg, you got to add all those up just to get the touchdown yardage. I'll let you just take a break and like try to figure it out. <laughs> Give it to Spina. <laughs> <laughs> Give the task to Spina. Well, then y'all switch. You can run the camera. I'll run the you camera. Can do, you can do the math. <laughs> All right, Greg, tell me the numbers of the touchdown runs. I'll write them down. I got it. I got, I'm gonna get it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Rodriguez. I'm right. Okay, I'm, I, I have to do the. I have to do the. Greg, they now started the running clock. So it's 81 to 31. The clock has started ticking. Greg, it does not feel like this much of a gap. No, because this, this Bastron team is a, it's a good team. They're very athletic. They're big. They're strong. And they beat Tyvee by 20 points. And Tyvee beat Liberty Hill. Football's a crazy game. It is. It is a crazy game. So they've started the running clock. This won't take much long. Make uh, as long now. It's ten minutes twenty seconds, and the clock is ticking. And I think it's starting to rain again. I see the rain suits and the umbrellas coming out. So, looks like the rain has started up again. Greg, let me tell you about it. The most miserable game I ever I ever played in. My junior year. At Galena Park High School. Galena Park. The Galena Park Yellow Jackets, and we were black and gold. We already talked about that. Mm, we're playing. It's debatable. We're, we're, we're in Baytown playing the Baytown Sterling uh, Rangers. And we were at their place. And I'm not lying when I tell you it was freezing. 
Freezing. It, it was freezing, and it was wet, and it was freezing. And that is 60 plus. It you, was miserable. We were getting our our tails kicked in, and I could not wait to get on the bus. It was just a uh, little snow. No, it was not snowing. It was freezing. Oh, no snow? No snow. It was oh. near freezing and, and a little drizzle, mm. but I was miserable, couldn't get warm. I just could not wait to get on the bus and get home. We were getting our tails kicked. It was miserable. You ever no, no matter, those? no matter, no matter how warm or cold no, it is, right. when you're getting your oh, it's worse. tail kicked. Yes. It's terrible. It's terrible. But yes, I grew up in Pennsylvania. We played in the snow for a half of the football season in freezing cold. Good job by Morris in on the tackle there. That's actually Garrett Lindgren. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Garrett Lingren came in on that one and made that tackle. It was Lingren. It was not Morris. Jacob Morris is 44, not 42. Way to pick me up there. I got you. I got you. Eight minutes left to go in the game. Liberty Hill leads 81-31. Setting up a showdown next week with Piper. Regardless of what Piper does tonight... Even if they lose, next week's for the district championship. And Greg, you're going to miss it. I am going to miss it. I have a pre-planned business trip. I'm going to be yeah, in Arizona. Nice. Winslow? Nope. Uh, Prescott. 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 I think if you're from Arizona, no. you say Prescott. No, I don't think so. You don't even, you don't I do. Know. I do. Actually, my company has a, 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 a branch out there, and they say Prescott. I don't know. I'm just saying. They're from Arizona. And there's actually going to be some baseball played uh, out there this week. There will be. There will be. The Rangers, the Diamondbacks. It'll be over by the time you get there. Or practically. You might be right. Incomplete pass brings up fourth down. You know, Greg, I, I think the World Series could end on that day. I think. Pass incomplete to Landon Barger. That's that would be the last day. I think it was a game seven, if I'm not mistaken. Somewhere right over there. And if you're there during well, it won't be in Prescott. It will won't even be in Arizona. It'll be back at Texas. It, it will be it game far. seven, will be in Texas. The running clock, the Panthers. Unfortunately, and this is what happens at the end of games, and we talk about this all the time, is, is the Panthers' end-of-game offense is their whole game offense. There's really no oh, right. difference to it. And when you when you see uh, the white jerseys come out, mm -hmm. the clean white jerseys come out, those are boys that want to, you know, get in, get a rep, get put something on film. Greg, did you do the math yet? Oh no, I, I totally stopped. I was, I was. Oh yeah, you was, got. This. You didn't want to do it anyway. I was. I did want to do it. I did want to do it. I'm going to do it. You, you're not motivated. I'm totally motivated. What we're trying to get Greg to do is add up the yardage of all the touchdown runs for Liberty Hill. I think I had it. Coach said I didn't have it in the fourth quarter, but now I do. He is on the spot. I love doing games with Coach. He said he would not want to be the defensive line coach tomorrow morning for Bastrop. Here come Liberty Hill out from the 40. Pitchford going to run it himself. He just runs out of bounds. We lose five yards there. If that five yards, Greg, yeah, may keep us from the national bounds. record. <laughs> that's, <laughs> hope that's not the case. But wisely done. He didn't need to take a hit. It'll be taken down in 14 to go. Clock still ticking. We're now at four and a half minutes left. Liberty Hill trying just to run this out. Hey, 
And off up the middle, tripped up. That was Cole Smith on the carry, and he got tripped up, or he he might have gotten more yardage. Third and eleven. Four minutes left to go in the game. Here the announcers say four minutes, and they've been running the clock here for the last several. It's ten o'clock at night. Tim, it's over five hundred yards. I have it at five thirteen and just touchdown runs. Wow. And you know there's easily another 150, right? At least. At least some big runs here. And the Panthers already have 82 points this year. They're sitting at 81 now. Well, one of those is a pass play. Oh, they're just going to punt it away. Yeah. Three minutes left and counting. Panthers not going to fake it. No. Camarina in. Interesting. That's Camarina we've Funny. seen and before. That's a good punt. Well, we've seen Hawkins come in to punt, and as good as Hawkins is at being a kicker, uh, one of the best in the state, maybe one of the best in the nation. If you really look at it, he's a Division One kicker signed with Baylor. Yeah, yeah. There's no doubt that he is talented and, and is going to have, you know, uh, he's going to be kicking for the next four years at least at, at the next level. Um, his punting, he's not practiced that much that and got put into games to be a punter and, and just didn't do as well as. So I'm sure they had some tryouts there, and Cam Marina looks like he came out on top. He did a good job. I like, I like that punt. Just gonna keep running it. The Bears just running it out as these young Panthers are all over it. Greg gonna miss you next week. Uh, see if Coach Dials one up here for him. Gonna miss you next week. Me too, buddy. I'll be listening to on Vibe though. I'll be listening to it. On Vibe, I may text in while we're while it's happening. May have to pass along some notes so you can tell the listeners. I have no idea who I'm getting as uh, our producer. Do you need anybody? You just roll uh, yes, it by yourself. I do need somebody to work the computer. Oh, that's Turn right. the knobs. I don't do that stuff. That's right. I don't do that. It takes a lot. It takes a lot to do all this. No, it takes a it lot. It is. You're, oh, Ball's Michael, out. Oh, my goodness. Liberty Hill. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's a lineman stream if he could have gotten in. Got inside the 10. Picked up, and that was Gray Hargrove. Gray Hargrove. Sophomore. And that is a Panthers picked football. it up. He saw the end zone, Greg. He, he did. He it. did see it. Clock still running with under a minute to go in the ball game. Panthers take a knee. They're going to just ball take Ball game knee. over. Yep. Best formation in football. Well, I can't see the scoreboard now that they brought down the, the blinds next door. It's 81 to 31 here. Take a knee. that will be done. Game's over. That's going to do it, folks. Liberty Hill wins this one. Creating a district championship showdown next week at home you don't want to listen to us next week you want to be at the game next week if you're in town you want to come out for that one it's a district championship on the line be at panther stadium next week to root your team on don't I, listen to me i hope i'm the only one listening i hope that i'm the only one listening everybody else that's a panther fan come out to the stadium yep. and make noise and cheer on this panther team jack's been a great job tonight yep. on the camera work as usual 
Spina did a great job. Always does. Great job, Jack Spina. 1-800-Jack Spina. 1-800-Jack Spina. Not sure what you're going to get. No, I don't have It's going to be good. Whatever it is, it's going to be good. It's good. It's good. It's for sure going to be good. Great game tonight, Tim. Good call. No, Good call. Fun. I wish you I wish you the best next week. I wish these Panthers the best next week. Either way, folks, Panthers playoff bound. That kind of secures them into a spot, whether yep. it's a first, second, or third, depending on what shakes out tonight and next week. But I'm pretty sure that's going to get us into the next round. So this won't be our last game. We'll get another one after next That's week and we hope that we're in the playoffs. that we're district yeah. district champs going in and, and get a good seed and see if this team can get on a run and, and, and make some noise in the playoffs well that had, had a fun time tonight Greg it was really good and uh, uh, everything we're working on all cylinders tonight you know and, and we even got through some of the fog issues uh, so it was it was a lot of fun Greg and I'll see you in two weeks we'll be calling the game next week but I'll see you in two weeks at a stadium to be determined. It could be back here because the first round last year was at this stadium. It could be. So we might be back here in a couple of weeks. So We'll see. Uh, Liberty Hill takes care of business on uh, this end, winning this game 81-31, and they will play for the district championship next week against Piper. You've been listening to Liberty Hill football, football on Vipe Media. Go Panthers.